Okay, shall we begin? Is the camera recording? Hello everyone, my name is Anton Antonov. Um, let's say it all together now. Hello, Anton Vladimirovich. So how do you communicate when you are excited? Good guess, in an excited way. And how do you say that you're cheerful? Cheerfully. I'm glad that you have all gathered here today. Some of you may already know me, as some of you have attended my events more than once, and I don't really understand why you're still here. Presumably, I'm not going to say anything new today. Although, of course, there will be certain elements from which you will be able to learn something new for yourself. But if I'm completely honest, I do understand why people attend such kind of events more than once. Because, as I have repeatedly said, and I'm saying it again, only 3% of all the new information that we have not come across before is absorbed by human brain. Can you imagine? Out of everything you'll hear today, only 3% will be soaked up. That is, 1% will be taken from the beginning, the other one from somewhere in the middle, and the third from the end of the session. And then you will leave, and you'll start telling everyone, listen, all the sicknesses come from our head. And that's really it. Therefore, if I may ask you not to write anything down, because when you're writing, you get distracted. Of course, there will be certain elements that might get you hooked, maybe some insights or some unknown terms, you can note them down, but I would not recommend it for those who are here for the first time. I would simply not recommend it, alright? Obviously, it's not a strict rule. I'm glad that all of you are here, uh, that you've managed to come, that, uh, well, probably not all of you, but at least half of you got long faces, and that is very good. I would say it's even perfect. I see some people have a depression, and I often do it like this. I feel ovarian cysts. I feel this, yeah. And that's great. If anyone has any kind of symptoms today, and by the way, what do we call symptoms? Well, something that hurts, something turns red, maybe your tail has fallen off, right? Do you remember that popular Russian cartoon? Today, we can already work with it. And if anyone has any kind of pain, maybe in the back, maybe in the neck, in the muscles, in the bones, elsewhere, Today we can work with it and demonstrate to others how it works and explain why it works in that particular way. The thing is that I have started receiving private messages again. I've posted one video when we restored eyesight of a girl and I do it at almost every seminar. But I've never shared it publicly before and I haven't advertised myself. Maybe I was a bit shy or afraid of something. I don't really know the reason. And I'm getting messages again saying that all of this is deception, this is all prearranged with fake people, and this is impossible. I don't understand the human skepticism, this is totally normal. The traditional medicine, the pharma industry, or our entire ideology have been teaching us since childhood that if our eyesight has failed, this is it. We need some surgery or expensive medicine, right? Well, or we have to engage in certain practices, but again, the traditional medicine still does not recommend the latter. So what does medicine tell us instead? Or what does pharma say? Well, there's only me, that's only us, and that's it. There is nothing else. Everything else does not work. Now, guys, if you can finish that conversation, that would be lovely. Thank you. According to the medical industry statistics, 40-60% to 60 of all the sick people in the world who apply for medical treatment do not survive. It turns out that an average of 50% of those who seek medical treatment do not pull through. 50%. And what does traditional medicine do? It says there's only me and nothing else works and kills 50% of the people. I think this is unfair to some extent. Of course, this is mostly about money and profit, and I think if some of us were in that industry, we would quite possibly do the same. I personally would not deny it. I haven't been there, I do not know what it means to be a tycoon of the industry. But it's true. I do not like it that the medicine does not give us an opportunity to research for additional solutions. It does not suggest, well, go out and look for alternative ways. We've got stage 4 cancer here. 
It doesn't matter what kind of diagnosis it is, but it's a cancer diagnosis. And it doesn't recommend to go and research. Instead, it says, come here, remove it, use chemotherapy and irradiate cells. And that's all. We no longer know what to do. May I talk about oncological diagnosis straight away? Because I know how much fear tumors cause. And I know what particular fears they can cause and how these fears work. And I'll start with them. Is it okay? Okay, Anton Vladimirovich. Didn't you just get enough sleep or what? I specifically scheduled our events at noon. Alright, so where were we? Oncological diagnosis. Just have a look. Who said that? I can count one, two, three. I've already noticed you, okay, so your execution will be held in the first place. You'll be the first. Traditional medicine does not give us an opportunity to choose. So what does it do? For instance, I have an oncological diagnosis, I'm all covered in tumors, and then I go to a doctor and I said, Doc, I don't know what to do. And what does the doctor offer? Don't worry, he says, we recommend you this new best scalpel, some new chemotherapy from Israel. It's a bit more expensive, but it's absolutely brilliant. And the irradiation of cells is also possible, right? And you say, okay, well, you get the feeling. Uh, well, I mean, I get the feeling that here comes the rescue. Now I'll undergo surgery, irradiate cells, and everything will be okay. And then what happens next? I go through irradiation process, remove the tumor, and then the doctor says, well, that's it. We've done everything you could. Sorry, now you can leave. You can go and pray, right? And let's hope there is no relapse. And then you realize that you haven't thought about what could happen next. You heard about the salvation, shifted responsibility to somebody else, but the salvation does not turn out to be there. And moreover, they will write down that this is a remission. They won't tell you that you've recovered. They will say it's only a remission. And I actually know that to some extent this is actually true, because nobody can guarantee, even us, that the tumors will not reappear. But we do guarantee that if you process this through your psyche, it will not come back in the same place. Never. Because you have developed, you have evolved, and in general, the evolution and internal evolution of each of you is my goal today. My goal is that you take another small or another big step or a few steps within yourself so that you understand what is really going on inside of you when you have some kind of pain. Not only when something hurts, but how you build relationships, how you find acquaintances or friends, and even how you choose neighbors. Today, I would like not only to explain, but to demonstrate this to you so that you can see, feel, and most importantly, realize it. My name is Anton Antonov and I'm a psychologist, a clinical psychologist and an expert in the field of modern psychosomatics. If you're interested, I'll tell you a little bit more about myself. I just have a feeling that some of you are already tired about how much I love to brag about it. No? Aren't you tired? Okay, I'm Anton Antonov, a child with divine behavior, right? If anyone knows, it's an unruly kid. Violent, nervous, uncontrollable, and prone to addictive behavior. And it seems to me that I'm still exactly the same. Well, addiction is dependence, isn't it? So I'm still prone to addictions, but now my inclination or dependence manifests itself towards psychosomatics. This is something I can talk about endlessly until my strength runs out, and apparently I'll do this all my life if I don't find something else, of course, unless I find some more interesting teaching for myself. But it seems to me that this is my entire life. It seems like this is a part of me and I'm here to talk about this. I didn't ask for this, I didn't order this path. When I was with a psychologist one day, uh, she said to me, you talk as if it were some kind of a punishment for you. No, 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 not a punishment, but if I were asked, where would you like to be born? How would you like to live? I would say, I want to be handsome and fit, well, it has worked, mostly, um, but obviously there is a room for improvement. But I would like to grow in a good family and so that everything is really cool. Well, however, my family is excellent, and of course, just with our own issues, no one is to blame for anything. Your mother, your father, your grandparents, your guardians, no one is to blame for what they pass on you. Because I'll tell you a little secret. All that you are is what you get from your parents. We'll talk about this today. 
Yes, including the psychology, the way you are is a set of everyone who was there before you. Including your psyche, your reactions, all your jealousy, anger, aggression, love, all of those things you inherit from your relatives. Of course, now we have a modern ideology. You are all by yourself, you can do anything by yourself, you are an individual. And we begin to disconnect from our family. We don't start leaving it, of course, and it does not apply to everyone, but for some people it looks like they are a kind of an all metal shell and everything that happens to them belongs to them and they have invented it themselves and they worked on it by themselves. Well, at least that's how I used to live. It seemed to me that it was all me and that's the way it was. And then it turned out that 80% of my reactions, emotions, my whining, my tears, well, everything that I had in my life, and until a certain age, I had nothing else. All I used to do was whining, I was aggressive, and I was angry, and as a result of inability to be aware of these emotions, my body was looking for any opportunity for self-therapy, okay? So I became addicted. At the age of six, I started smoking cigarettes, at nine, drinking alcohol, at 15, Am I allowed to say this? If everyone else will watch this. So, um, at the age of 20, I got hooked on injecting drugs, if anyone knows what it is. And now I hear people say that this is a choice of an individual to drink alcohol or smoke or inject drugs. I explained that this is not the case. I explained that this is some self-therapy of a body. The body is looking for any opportunity to self-therapy in order to relieve inner emotions and that human is not aware of. The tension is so high, it's so unbearable inside that the body wants to release it. And this also applies to antisocial behavior in general, including everything we know about what is going on. Naturally, I do not justify anyone. Never. I just tried to explain and I carry this idea that any behavior can be explained. There is no need to criticize anyone right away and put some kind of a label on somebody. Any behavior can be explained and I know it from my own experience, who I am, what I've gone through and is now clear to me why I used to do it. And as a result, at the age of 23, I heard a little something about psychology. Well, let's say part of my mind looked at it and it shook me to the core. I changed my life. For a couple of years, I was trying to quit drugs with the help of psychology. By the age of 25, I did it. And as soon as it happened, I went to study. So now I have several additional degrees in the field of psychology. I never stop. I continue to study seminars, training, books, and so on. And I have a clinical psychologist qualification. In general, I specialize in diagnosis, but it turns out that modern psychosomatics refers to all spheres of our lives. And all that we are, our actions, our whole life is psychosomatics. That is, based on something that happens in our psyche, we take a step left or right, okay? Or does it somehow happen by itself, in your case? You choose people to work based on what you have in mind. Isn't it so? No? It's not right? Tell me more. Well, but you can feel people empirically. And where is this happening in your case? This sense of feeling. And what's the feeling, by the way? Well, I don't know. It seems to me that this is a little different than thoughts. And is this happening in you? I mean, inside of you? Yes, of course. Probably. Is the body somat? Somat. And where do you feel it? In your mind or where? For me, a thought is a thought. That is what I'm thinking in my head. Wait, but did I mention thought? We will talk about this later, okay? We'll talk about this. However, you're absolutely right. I just haven't reached that point yet to explain it in a way you do it. Okay, I'll tell you now. Guys, your thought is secondary. You don't really control yourself. I mean, our thinking process does not control us. That is, we don't control ourselves through thinking. The process of thinking is secondary. Can you imagine it? 
And I know you may be thinking, what? What is this bald man saying? What is he talking about? Let's say that a thought comes to me that I want to go outside. I'll go out and then I'll think that I want, um, I don't know, to sit down and be silent, for instance. So I'll sit down and I'm quiet. Maybe I think that I want to register my apartment to his name and I'll do it. Is that right? Is that a thought? That is a thought. But before, our feeling comes first. We'll talk more about this later. What is the secondary nature of our thinking? Why don't we really control ourselves? I'll explain this, show it and prove it to you, of course. Everything that I'm going to tell you today will be evidence-based. I'll try to prove it right here and now. Maybe it won't be successful with everyone, but it will be evident in majority of cases, most certainly. All right, so who knows anything about psychosomatics? All the straight A students, please be quiet. The question is for those who have never attended. What is psychosomatics? A couple of people who are here for the first time. All problems arise from the head. And what are those problems? Mind problems. In thinking process, you mean? Well, yes. Then why don't we think in such a way that everything turns out great? Cannot. We cannot. We cannot control our thinking. And why aren't we able to control it? I don't know. We didn't learn how to. All right. Is everything clear? That is, I won't ask questions about anything anymore. Are there any conscious people in the audience? Well, I mean, those of you who consider themselves conscious, raise your hands. There's one person, one, two, three, four, five, six people. Someone over there hesitated or maybe hands became itchy or you wanted to fix the jacket. Are there more aware individuals in the house? Good. Here, a girl with a Coca-Cola t-shirt. Obviously, this is not an advertisement. What is awareness in your understanding? For me, consciousness is some feeling in the first place. A certain feeling, whether there is a response in my body or not. A response in the body? Yes, whether there is a response in my body or not. I always ask myself whether I want something or not. But do you mean that the reaction in your body is not always there? You've mentioned that there is some feeling in the body. So there are some moments... I've learned to notice it recently. So you feel nothing in some moments or what? I used to be confused between the feeling of anxiety and tranquility. So this is a feeling. That is, you always feel, or not always. Now I always feel, but uh, I may not know the feeling. So consciousness is when I can identify my feelings. Okay, I see. Now who else can tell me what awareness or consciousness is? It's the process of observing one's own thoughts and feelings. The process of observing thoughts. The process of observing? That is whether you can observe them or not. Or what? Observing them in order to control them. In order to control them. Okay, now the Coca-Cola girl, you need to see that guy. He knows something about this and how to control all this and what to do with it, right? Maybe that's a response to uh, when our body speaks to us or something like that. Uh, that is to be able to hear it in the moment and respond to it. It's an ability to hear it in the moment and respond. So doesn't it always speak to you? Well, uh, there is something happening all the time. The body always speaks and there is always something talking in the body. So you mean that it would be desirable to pay attention, but you don't do it? Or you don't pay attention on purpose? So, you know, maybe you think, ah, well, whatever. What is my body trying to tell me anyway? I know everything here, what to do, where to go. But I'm still sitting here and thinking, why on earth am I still eating in the evenings? Why do I have such an incomprehensible boyfriend? Or maybe my girlfriend is having the best time of her life with another guy already. Because it is more convenient to play a victim. Well, as if I don't understand anything, this is not my responsibility. Yeah, but the question was about awareness. So, look, there is a scientific research, yes, it's already very old, and it tells us that our today's thoughts are 95% similar to our thoughts of yesterday. Well, that's on average an approximate figure, but something else is even more interesting. It's fascinating that if I ask you to tell me about your day yesterday, not even about your thoughts, but just about your day, you would probably remember maximum two or three hours you can talk about. This is the maximum. Just try to retell everything that happened straightforwardly. And then you must be super advanced to be able to do that. Now, if I ask any of you to do it, you will tell directly, tell me everything that was happening maximum for an hour. 
An hour is about 5% of yesterday or even less. Yeah, am I right? And what if I fully remember the whole day? You can't recall everything. You can remember just certain events. For example, I visited that place, I went there, but you can't tell me what you were thinking all day, even for an hour. I'm sorry, but this is just how your brain works. Of course, there's an interesting theory of sub-personality when we talk about our yesterday only out of our current personality, which we are now. I would say based on the state in which we are now. If we had a similar state at same point yesterday, then we can recall all the thoughts or similar states. For example, if I'm angry now and you ask me, tell me about yesterday, I will say something like, this one guy made me really angry yesterday. And that's it. I won't even remember the kindness of yesterday, because I'm in a certain state now. Does anyone disagree? If so, tell me. Let's discuss it now. And somebody started to defend herself. What happened? Everything is okay. All is good. Can't you remember yesterday through the prism of emotions? Through the prism of emotions, you won't be able to remember your thoughts. You won't remember what you were thinking about. Tell me now, what were you thinking about during your dinner time? And a smile immediately appears, see? I had a terrible, boring transformation game. No, what were you thinking about? That I had to leave the place as soon as possible. Oh, cool, isn't it? So how long does this thought last? Anything else you'd like to tell me? So you mean that you were just sitting there and thinking, I have to leave, I have to leave, I have to leave, I have to leave, all over again? You know where people usually end up with such symptoms, when they usually cannot stop ruminating thoughts and we cannot stop it. If we're talking about awareness, all those of you who raise their hands, please tell me how often, in percentage terms, you don't do things that you want to do. For example, you go to the gym, start learning something, clean up, whatever. What percentage out of 100? Pardon? Half of it, that's 50%. See, you're 50% aware, right? And now the second question. What percentage out of 100 you do things that you don't want to do? In percentage, how well? Well, the second half, obviously there are about 5% remains, approximately. So who's conscious again? Raise your hands. Who's the most aware here? I don't consider myself a conscious person. This is the proof. Yes, obviously it is my proof, but I mean it is based on the studies that I've read, realize and know, as well as observations of myself. Sorry, but we're just not aware. We enjoy to call ourselves like that, but we don't understand what we genuinely mean by this concept. We've just picked up some cool words. We've heard consciousness and another one, success, and then we heard an awesome word, psychosomatics, and let's just do it right away. And But there's nothing comprehensible at all, right? And today, I reveal this incomprehensible to you a little. What is the real scientific psychosomatics, the one that really works? You are in a certain state of mind right now. And I like it that we started talking about feelings. I really like it. We are in a certain state at the moment, and all of you feel something now. Well, except for Zhenya, probably. Um, I guess, Zhenya, do you feel anything at all? It seems like you drifted away somewhere. So, you're all in a certain state right now, and answer yourself the following question. What do you feel inside? You can give a name to this feeling. Describe it in your head in one word. What do you feel? Now ask yourself where these feelings are in your body. In which part of the body is the feeling concentrated? Now, we feel with the help of the body, don't we? Or what? Guys, how do we feel? With the help of the body. So the feeling that you have identified yourself, where is it in your body? Tell me, in which part is it concentrated? Yeah, look, well, someone is pointing to the chest. In the chest, right here, maybe a bit lower, in the head. Someone may have alexithymia. That is, when the body is disconnected from the head. This is not a diagnosis, this is a psychiatric term. We have just come across the idea that everything, absolutely everything, goes to one destination. So, you all feel something. And now I'll tell you this. Imagine that you are in your country, at home. At home, in Moscow, or wherever you live. Imagine that you're there. Do feelings change? Yes, but how is that? 
You're all here, aren't you? Why does it change? What's happening? Do your thoughts fly there? And why do they fly there? What happened to your thoughts that they flew there? Who controls your thoughts? It seems to me that our brain simply doesn't tell the difference between fantasy and reality. Absolutely right, but we're talking about something else. Why does the body switch to another state so easily? Who am I anyway to say one word and your feelings have changed? What's happening? You can be influenced in such a way? Sorry? Well, of course, everything is clear with you. Everything is great in your case. You're conscious. Your thoughts aren't playing. You've already understood that. And that's probably why you're sitting on the front row. Maybe something will change in your view or ideology. Okay, so we're getting started here. Let's get to the information already. I can keep on talking about all of this for a very long time. Very compelling and all very cool if you're interested. But I think we can cut to the chase already, and as a result, we'll all work through and resolve some things. Right? Or not? Or maybe you'd like me to talk a bit further, switch on a couple of symptoms in you, and then get started? Okay, let's activate something, shall we? I am Anton Antonov, happiness and goodness, so to speak. Anton Antonov. Well, here I am, passing you by, walking around. And here I am, Anton Antonov, guys. Hello, everyone. Hello. Just feel how does it feel when Anton Antonov is walking around. Now, who's sitting in the back? What's happening? Why? I've got a lumbar herniated disc. A lumbar hernia. May I speak about this? Because we can resolve it now. Great. I'd say it's even perfect. Sorry, but it is really perfect. So here I am, Anton Antonov. Here I am. I'm passed by all of you. So all of you have come here. Everyone has come to listen to me. By the way, I forgot to say how I got into psychosomatics. I've started very hard since the age of seven, and at some moments I could not even utter a sound. I didn't talk at all. Uh, even today, you'll notice it sometimes. I guess it's already happened once where I... Whoop, and I just can't pronounce anything. In case you haven't noticed, uh, that's how I got into psychosomatics. What does medicine and what do logopedists say about this? They say it's impossible to get rid of stuttering. Those logopedists that have told me that, go and watch this video. Guys, this is really like it is. And now look, now I am cancer. Some oncological diagnosis. I am an oncological diagnosis. I am cancer. Just feel it. How do you feel when I'm here? I am cancer. How do you feel it, Yulia? I am cancer, an oncological diagnosis, some tumor. Yes, I am a tumor. Just feel it, I am a tumor and I'm coming to you. Now I'll become you, right now, I'll become you. I'll happen to you now. It's not cool, is it? Not cool at all. I am tumor, guys. I am a tumor. I am a tumor. A tumor. Whose feelings have changed, guys? Raise your hands. Honestly, who has felt tension? Well, almost everyone, right? So what has happened? Same person walked around and just said one word to you, and not only have your feelings changed, but now you are scared and felt tension. Psychological processes have begun to occur in your body. Okay, so shall we make a brief digression now? We have uh, one viewer here with us with a symptom. Something hurts. Can we just make it easier for her to be here now? Can you come here, please? Yes. Well, if it hurts. Now, someone will say these are fake people and it's a prearranged, yes? Of course, it's an actor. Yes, she really doesn't have any pain, but I'm already used to. How are you? I'm going to cry now. Oh, I'm sorry. And uh, what's your name? Regina. And where do you feel pain? Show me. Here and in the leg. In your leg. And how many years do you feel this? Well, two years ago it got worse. Is that a herniated disc? Give me your hand. Take it easy and tell me how much pain is there in your back right now? It doesn't hurt while standing. And when does it hurt then? When I lean over or sit down. And can you lean over a bit to feel the pain? Yes, I like that. Um, how old are you? 
Uh, your hand already has tightened, by the way. And how old are you? 34. 34. Now, you are you. You're 30 years old. Just feel your back. 25 years old. Be patient. 20 years old. 15 years old. 10 years old. 5 years old. 3 years old. 1 year old. And what do you feel now in your back, Regina? It doesn't hurt anymore. Well, am I a wizard or what? All of you can do it, guys. There is no magic here. I want to convey this message to you today. You are being deceived. You are told that you are incurable. You are told that if something hurts, go to the pharmacy. Sorry, but this is just how our capitalist system works. Now, let's try to find where it all started. We'll try to alleviate the symptom, at least for the duration of the seminar. Come on, now, you are you, and you are one year old, two years old, three years old, four years old, five years old, six years old, seven years old, eight years old, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen years old, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Yes, what happened there? Any picture that comes to you? I remember school. And yes, what you remember from school? What happened there? Come on. Come on, that's the one, come on. Boys, difficult years of adolescence, low self-esteem, fat teenager. Um, yes, and somebody said or did anything? I'm covered in goosebumps. It was constant pressure. Now, who said or did something for the first time? What happened there? Yes, there it is. Come on, say it, come on. Well, they wanted to get to my body, abuse me. Okay, now you are you, the day before this happened. You are you, the day before that all happened. How is the back? Is it calm or not? Well, it's not so intense. Now you are you, one year before this happened. How's the back? Great. Yes, and there I appear, Anton Antonov, and I'll tell you everything that will happen to you at your school. There will be pressure on you, and they will try to get to your body. Now, you are you, and you are five years old, three years old, one year old, one day old. You were just born. Now you're in your mom's belly, and you are seven months old, five months old, one month old. And now you are one day old. You were just conceived, and no one knows about you yet. Okay, now you are you, but you're not incarnated yet. You're flying somewhere in the universe as some kind of energy, choosing the future family. And how does it feel? Still taught? Mm, very much. Now you are your mother a month before her pregnancy. You are your mother and you are 15 years old. You are your mother and you are 5 years old. And now you are your mother and you are just one month old. And now you are your mother, you were just born. Mm. What is mm? Still taught. You are your mother's mother and you are five years old. How does it feel? It still hurts. And you are your mother's mother and you are one year old. Stronger. And now you are your mother's grandmother and you are five years old. Stronger. Now you are your mother's great-grandmother. Even stronger. You are your mother's great-great-grandmother and you are one year old. All right. It doesn't matter. And there I appear and say, Dear good woman, I understand that all of you have such a mess here. Don't pass this strategy on. One of your great-granddaughters does not need it at all. She'll have her own questions and issues to solve. Does she agree with me or not? What is the answer that comes to the request of not passing it on? She doesn't agree. Doesn't she agree? Ask her why. What words come to your mind? Why doesn't she agree? Why does she want everyone to suffer? Okay, now you are you again, here and now. When it hurts like that, what kind of person are you? Describe yourself in one word. Describe in one adjective. Helpless. Well, will you allow yourself to be helpless? No. For one minute, just for one minute, come on, once more. Okay, so when you're helpless, what are you like? Another word. Weak. Yes, and would you allow yourself to be weak? Just for one minute. Just for one, will you? And when you are weak, what are you like? One word. Feminine. Yes. A woman. Yes. They were all very strong women in our family. How it is there? I don't feel the pain in my leg anymore. Okay, let's applaud. Such a good girl. 
Go and have a seat. If anything pops up, you'll come back. Who would have doubted? Now, what would they have done in a hospital now, especially in an Indonesian one? Cash. We need your money. We do not know what's happening, but we can remove the symptoms. I will say that none of the doctors are to blame. Doctors themselves as individuals. They can be our fathers, mothers or anyone. They're not to blame. They just don't know. They're not informed about it. The mighty of this world do actually know what is happening. Okay. Are there any questions about what I have just done? We just reached to our grandmothers and grandfathers and I understand that somebody may feel like, well, what the hell was that? Does anyone feel like that? Well, th does it happen for just one session or two or three? I like to work efficiently. I always explain to everyone that I'd like to resolve a problem in one session. I'm not talking about oncological diagnosis though. In case of oncological diagnosis, it happens that as a result of one click, the tumor disappears in a month or two, but I cannot guarantee this. This is the case one out of a hundred. Sorry, but this is just the way it is, because a tumor is a whole strategy. Right here in Regina's case, that was a whole strategy. Did you see that? All the women have been strong in the family line. She's suffering from either a hip joint or a bone problem, but most likely it's a joint due to the lumbar area. I'll tell about it in an hour or so. It's a very generalized self-devaluation. Well, it's clear that there were women and there was no men. So a woman had to be strong, you know, to raise children, run the house, run the household, whatever. I don't know how they lived there, but she did not succeed. What was going on in the body, in the psyche and a conflict? I have to be strong, but I can't. And the psyche begins to load these emotions onto the body due to the fact that a person can't accept them, release them, work through them or change the situation. Yes, in principle, the whole psychosomatics tells us that everything is your unlived emotions. Doctors will also tell me that stress causes my problems and I'll go on and swallow pills, I'll go to a pharmacy, but nobody will explain to me what kind of stress is the cause. Uh, our scientific psychosomatics defines what exactly causes particular pain. Why this suppressed emotion, I want to be strong but I can't, will influence exactly the lumbar area. Why will it surface in the hand of someone else's case or in the neck area? I'll tell you about all of this briefly today. Guys, all illnesses are in our head. Have you heard about this? Yes, but everyone goes to pharmacy. Yes, if there is some pain. And I used to live the same way because nobody had explained anything to me. It's like a religion. What does it say? That there is a choice. There is a God and there is no God. Hiding the third truth, that is what is actually happening. And what about infection? For example, is it also somehow in our head? Damn, that's such a question. People always ask this. Guys, we always explain, including viruses, if they exist at all, as some transmissible virus. Yes, we see how we can transmit feelings, and I will show you that today too. The fact that all of us are constantly involved in a so-called interhuman internet, 24-7. You can always feel what other person feels. Always. And this is just biology. There's no magic here, no energy. I don't really like such things myself. I have been fond of esoterics for about five years, and that's not mine. Uh, well, I mean, it did not work for me. It didn't help me in any way with my questions and problems, my drug addiction, my aggressiveness, my anger, my inability to live and build relationships. Although I found Zelen very helpful, I love him very much. It served as a stabilizing crutch for me. I used to follow him then. I read all the transurfing books in a month. It was like five books at the time. It was 2010 or 11. All the books in one month. He impressed me. And then I switched to Blavatsky and all the rerics, the founders of esoterics in Russia in general, if you know. Um, if, if someone knows who they are, if not, you can research. The rerics are interesting, but legs and heads can be broken in their literature. Okay, so what I have just done with Regina is psychogenetics. That is what they told you at school, that you have information about all the living organisms of your species that had lived before you, that we have the DNA structure in a molecule, all the information about everyone who had lived before us. Has everyone heard about it? And modern psychosomatics has learned to drag out this information to the level of feelings about anyone. 
about great grandmother or grandmother we can always transfer you in any state and you will feel that that is what that person has experienced and we know how to verbalize feelings i mean if i ask you what you feel you'll explain it to me that is you'll verbalize your feelings right actually this is what i said at the very beginning Our thought is secondary, feelings are primary. A feeling arises in you and that is what causes your thoughts. If I throw something at you, first you will dodge and then you will think about what has just happened. A quarter of a second, a quarter of a second, that is a quarter of a second separates a feeling from thought. The feeling flares up first, the thought pops up only after that. This explains why we don't control ourselves, to put it mildly. I want to do something, but I don't. I want to do something, but I don't. Because emotions control the situation. If the body is afraid to go somewhere, it won't let you go there. No matter how much you think about it, I want to go to a disco or somewhere else, but for some reason I don't go. Well, of course, almost everyone goes to a disco, right? Let's take going to a gym, because the body is afraid of something. Of course, this is not something related to a particular place. And that is not because of some pumped up coach who will do something to me. No, this is about the whole strategy. This is about the fact that if I go to the gym, I'll become strong. If I become strong, I'll become happy. And if I'm happy, it's dangerous. And then we'll find a conviction. And that comes from childhood. For example, if our mother or father used to say, life is hard. And if you smile, you will cry. Who has had such experience? I had it all the time. What are you laughing at constantly? You're going to cry. Why are you so chill for all the time? What is recorded in the body as a result? Smiling and happiness equals danger. I go to the gym, I become strong, cool, handsome and happy. I'm in a cool state, I'm cheerful and the body says, nope, it's dangerous, I won't let you go there because everything that happens in our body is aimed at only one thing, survival. The goal is to survive. The evolutionary goal of each of you, and I do know that some of you believe that aliens brought us here, okay. But when they brought us here, we were already evolved, right? Or God created us, and also we were already evolved, right? The church even does not deny that, because sometimes there are people at my seminars and I say, well, who knows that the earth appeared six and a half thousand years ago, and they raise their hands. And where did all of this come from? And I asked this after I had given the lecture and they say, we were already created like this, that is evolved. And then I say, okay, I agree. It suits us fine too. Evolution has only one goal, for you to survive, to survive and pass on the information. You're looking for the meaning of life, but you won't find it in the context of your current life. You can find it in the context of future and past lives as well. That is several lives. It is the same about the mission. Yesterday I started recording a story on Instagram and I started recording a story with some ideas and got so much feedback, so many people have began to respond that that's it and now you won't get rid of me. Now I'll record more stories, the videos with my thoughts since people react like that. Offers started pouring in. Uh, we do this, we do that, let's collaborate and so on. Well, of course I used to get offers like that too. I'm not gonna hide. Anyway, if we're talking about mission, now this ideology has also become fashionable. Finding a mission. The mission is what will be continued after you're gone. This is what you begin and it will go on blooming after you're gone. This is the mission. This is what changes other people's lives. It's what helps something to live. Get rid of this ideology. Live for yourself. Come on. Pump up your business. Pump up yourself. Become successful. Get it out of your head or replace it with higher ideology. I do it for something so that something can live to assist something. It doesn't matter whether it's children, plants, animals, the whole planet or whatever. And that's when we feel fulfilled. That's when we feel that we live for a reason. Because everyone who's focused on earning money will be lost, as I said yesterday. I lost myself like that once when I used to chase money. It gives nothing. You feel empty and don't know what to do next. But fulfillment comes through emptiness. Therefore, blessed are the obstacles as they help us grow. So, our thought is secondary. It arises in the brain in a quarter of a second after some feeling appears in the body. And the impulse occurs directly in a particular organ. In this burger. The one that everyone has. Yes, the one that is located here. An impulse, and only then a thought arises in consciousness. Important decisions arise in the brain and body. Feelings occur 6 or 10 minutes before you get it in consciousness. 
Can you imagine? You get up, you have already gone to the bathroom, excuse me, then you left it and then bingo, I realized what I would do. This is what I just realized, but the brain knew this about 10 minutes ago. The body already knew that it would take place. Sorry, but we don't control ourselves. Again, there is literature about free will which doesn't exist, and the research which is also boring if you read it, because it's a research. In general, science is a bit boring, that's why you don't really go into science. It's more interesting to open YouTube, that's it, and there goes the tree and brain, the reptilian complex, and so on. It's easier to perceive. I'm not blaming anyone in any way, but this is how ideology educates us. In the Soviet Union, they used to teach, choose one direction, and people did it, didn't they? In the Soviet Union, they used to teach, you need to have a family, and then people got married. What do they tell you now? You are free, you go and do whatever you want, but these generic remnants, they stay in the memory, they do exist, and the body plays them back. I need someone so that I am... well, I have to marry someone. I can't say whether you have to or not, but a human needs another human, undoubtedly. Because again, according to the study, some unrealistic amount of oxytocin is released when you hug somebody. And then everything else follows, that is dopamine, endorphin, and so on, if I'm not mistaken. Guys, if I'm wrong in something, or you can always correct me, it will be great. I need it too. I like it a lot. So, look, now we start with, let's say, infancy. We all have programming phases, conflicts that occurs between our parents. What do we consider conflicts? What did I tell you? For example, I want to be strong, but my body is weak. I want, but there is a conflict between the psyche and the body. As a result, psychosomatics doesn't function well. It turns into a tension. Its intensity increases with each situation in which I realize that I cannot be strong. But I need to. I have to. My mother told me so, my father told me so, and even Putin told me so. You need to be strong and you have to work. But the body just doesn't produce. A conflict is created and that causes emotions. It is those emotions that are biologized into illness. But we'll talk more about it later, why it happens that way. So at the end, I'll tell you what can be done. I don't know if it helps you or not, but I'll tell you what to do so that a problem does not turn into illness, so that it's not biologized into a tumor or anything else. So there is a programming phase in which all parents' conflicts, well, not all conflicts, of course, I'm exaggerating a bit, in which psychological conflicts of parents become biological symptoms of children. For example, Parents argue a lot a year before the conception. They had been quarreling all year and then they stopped to conceive a child. The child already receives information about those issues and conflicts, about what was happening there. Nature or biology begins to prepare a child for life before it is even born. Before that, all this information is being recorded in us constantly. And everything that happened during that year is passed on to the child. Well, can you imagine that if a mom and dad argued hard, the child suddenly appears to be really neurotic for some reason. Somehow he has psychosis, and parents cannot understand why. It seemed the pregnancy was good, and they ate healthy, and didn't smoke or drink, but for some reason the child is neurotic. And will always find the answers in the programming phase. In the programming phase, in principle, the formation of personality begins, what you will project onto the life later in your childhood. Where do autistic kids come from? What is autism? Does everyone have an answer? Where is it from? Why? Well, it's clear that there's no answer here. I asked the wrong audience, sorry. Uh, the child hides the emotions inside. Well, here you go, you have the highest grade, and happiness as well, and health. I'm serious. What is autism? The child is closed, isolated. Sure, it's scary, I understand, but today I'll talk about many things a bit cynically, because it's my job. Uh, if I'm not a little cynical, I myself will slip up somewhere. Who saw what I shared yesterday? People keep on telling me, how do you take it all, put up with our emotions? I don't tolerate anything. Such topics are already resolved inside of me, they don't affect me. I can work with anyone on anything. Of course, I will have some unresolved issues. Sometimes I feel a click during a session and I immediately ask my colleague to help me and I work with someone. Someone from my own circle. 
Anyway, so parents are fighting and a child simply doesn't want to hear it. The autistic spectrum means that the child goes inside himself, an inward shutdown. They called it this way. He goes around, knocks everything down, sees or hears nothing, and that's the way it is. I always recommend to parents of such children, take him to the forest and see what happens. You stuff him with drugs, you take him to doctors, the child retreats even more. The child is scared because you're causing that to happen. Any child under the age of three lives with the feelings of his mother. And what does the child feel? Fear and anger. And he or she starts to retreat even more. Evolutionary, our body has only two states. A state of comfort and a state of discomfort. You can remember this. Discomfort. All your emotions, sadness, sorrow, what else you feel there. All of that refers to discomfort. Discomfort is always fear. Evolutionary, if you experience something uncomfortable for the body, it means that there is a danger. So there is a threat to survival. And the body survives in these conditions. It does everything to survive. Depending on the intensity of these emotions, it triggers a biological response so that you survive. Because biologically, the body does not really care about your consciousness and what's happening there. Consciousness evolved 4 million years ago, while your body began to form 400 million years ago. Well, guess who's in charge? Well, comfort though, everything is clear, isn't it? Everything that does not make me stressful, cry, tense, and so on. So, for a child, if his mother takes her baby to the hospital and she is tense, for the child and for his body, the situation is perceived as a threat to survival, and the body does everything to avoid this threat. It causes inward shutdown. The kid retreats more and more and more. I recommend to such parents to take their child to the forest and just observe what happens to him for a few hours. He begins to hear a bit. Well, not always, of course, but then begin to open up such kids just a little bit, but they finally begin. Doesn't that mean that a child retreats from external factors? Of course it does. This is how we explain to such parents what is happening with their child, because they are already so scared by medicine that they don't know what to do. So, after the programming phase, an embryo starts to grow in a woman's womb. I always talk about it in detail at my seminar, but today I'll talk about it briefly. But again, we'll touch upon everything. So, an embryo appears in a woman's womb. Initially, it's called a zygote, this little something after the cells just joined. This is a zygote. And then it turns into an embryo. And all living things on Earth are formed from three embryonic germ layers. I know it may sound difficult now, incomprehensible, and you're likely to forget it later, but it's necessary to mention it because it, this is the basis of psychosomatics. We're all formed in the mother's womb from three embryonic germ layers. The first one is the endoderm. The endoderm layer. The second one is the mesoderm. The mesoderm germ layer. And the third one, the ectoderm germ layer. All living organisms are formed from these three germ layers. In psychosomatics, we divide the mesoderm into an older and a younger group. I'll tell you why. There is the old mesoderm and the new mesoderm. The organs and parts of the brain are formed from each germ layer. This germ layer is the oldest of the three, which began to form about 400 million years ago. And it's also called the reptilian brain. Has anyone heard about it? I don't like this definition. For me, it's not quite appropriate. Our brainstem was formed from here. The brainstem and the entire excretory system, lungs, kidneys. Not completely. Many organs consist of several layers at once, I mean tissues from different layers. But the basis of the endoderm is lungs, our reproductive system, kidneys, thyroid glands, tonsils. By the way, we'll start with the latter. It can be also found in our eyes and ears. And with this thing, the endoderm, and accordingly with all the organs that emerge from it, we react to the so-called morsel conflicts. 
Soon you'll understand what I mean. I know this is some dark woods yet. What? Morsels? What is he talking about? What morsels? He start talking about children, now he switched to morsels. What is that about? So, morsel conflicts. I'm writing down just a morsel because I'm going to draw a diagram here. Morsel conflicts. What are they? Look, all our diseases follow the same pattern. All of them. All our diseases. I'm hammering this into your head. Follow the same pattern. And I'm drawing this for you. And obviously this diagram can be infinite. This is what we call a chronic disease. Relapses, aggravation, and then again relapse, and then it becomes a little better again. Does everyone know what it is? Who has some kind of a chronic disease? Can you even please raise your hands? Wow. Was it me who gathered such an audience or what? I would ask the organizer, where did you find all of them? Lots of hands. But I've gathered you guys. Well, that is my case as well. By the age of 25, I had more than 15 diagnoses. I don't know. I guess it's not worth listing all of them now. But all the time, I used to ask the doctors why. What's wrong with me? Well, I thought that most likely that's the result of drugs, alcohol and so on, because as I said, I started smoking cigarettes at the age of six and I didn't stop smoking until I was 25. Actually, no illness could stop me at all, besides of drugs, alcohol and so on. I thought it was the reason. It turned out that it also came from the psyche, because I stopped and quit drugs and began treatments, everything went away, and after six months or a year, everything was coming back again. They said to me, well, you understand that all the diseases are getting younger, there is much more stress. Well, I understood, but for some reason I couldn't believe it. I did not believe, first of all, because of my damaged teeth. I think since the grade six or seven, they were damaged symmetrically. I asked dentists why I had tooth number six damaged on both sides at once, or number four on both sides, symmetrically. They explained to me that there were some nerves, something there, this and that, and come on, get out of here, young man, you don't understand anything about this anyway. It surprised me why it was happening at the same time. If the teeth are damaged because of eating sweets, why are they damaged on both sides at the same time? How does it happen? Why aren't number four and six damaged? Why number six in particular? It has turned out that there was some very interesting answers to that. Anyway, all diseases follow the same pattern. This is a so-called active phase, the active phase. This is what a medicine considers as stress, as a result of which you get sick. And then there is a healing phase. This is what feels like a disease. This is when you have running nose or some pain or your tail has already begun to fall off. This is a healing phase. This needs to be considered. Look, once we were all the simplest one-celled creatures, that is, what we came out of used to look like this. It used to look like this, and this microorganism lived according to one principle. It had to eat something, and then it was necessary to defecate it. That's it. All its life activity ended there. In principle, we came out of this later. Can you imagine that this thing was turned into the gastrointestinal tract from which everything started afterwards? If anyone is a little familiar with the theory of evolution, so that is the way it is. The simplest one-celled protozoa had only one hole, as an entrance and exit. We ate and defecated through one hole, can you imagine? And the only stress this microorganism could experience was the ability to consume an available morsel or expel it. Expelling was easier if you had already consumed it, but the fact that it couldn't swallow it because the huge size meant it was probably going to die. Because it couldn't eat it, right? Now it has become a lot easier for us. Some people are fastening for seven days. For this microorganism, the inability to swallow the morsel was the cause of stress. And when this microorganism came across some morsel that was bigger than necessary, the right gland was activated. More mucus was secreted in order to lubricate the morsel. We are already talking about morsel conflicts. 
in order to lubricate this morsel and so that the microorganism could swallow it. The left gland was responsible for expelling, that is, in order to release mucus to lubricate all of our vital products and to expel them. If the morsel was too large, the gland would increase in size. Let's assume that it was a tumor because the cells divide. If a histology is done, they divide and very rapidly. And if it's a malignant, division happens even more quickly. And the cells were divided in order to produce more mucus so that the microorganism could swallow the morsel. When this morsel passed through the entire system, the mucus was released from there. The gland was also increased in size slightly in order to produce the mucus and expel the morsel. This microorganism was divided into a gastrointestinal tract, and can you imagine we have these glands? And who can guess where we have these glands? Tonsils. Exactly. Perfect. Guys, that's our tonsils, and they respond to morsel conflicts. Who has children, or who had problems with tonsils themselves? Lots of hands, you guys. And there are people with kids. Do your children's tonsils hurt? Do they get inflamed? Do they cough? And what is the reason for coughing? This should be taken into consideration as well. Adenoids? Well, look, I'm a small child. I really want some toy that my mother does not buy for me because there's no money, because I did not deserve it or for any other reason. I want this toy. Our body controls us because it's 400 years old. 400. Well, I mean the brain stem. Initially, all your situations, everything that you come across in life, passes through the brainstem, cerebellum and hemispheres. Always. Filtering process is in progress. And if you react at morsel conflicts very strongly, if you have a strategy about which I'll talk now, reacting strategy to morsel conflicts, then you'll fail at the very first filter. I mean, you know, they say something like this, let's go and do this, but you have some fear. Okay, now stop, let's have a look again. The child wants a toy, the child wants a toy really bad, but it does not receive it for several days. What does it mean for a child? Stress. The child does not receive it, he's nervous. His body feels that he's nervous, and there are two states for the body, comfortable and uncomfortable. Everything that is uncomfortable is perceived as a threat to survival. If the body is stressed, then it means that there is a threat to survival, because if a dog feels uncomfortable, that there is some danger nearby, and the dog will just leave the territory. But we are social beings, we can't just leave the apartment, we can't leave our workplace, even though we're very uncomfortable there. And for a child, this is stressful, it means that this is an uncomfortable state, the body perceives it as a threat to survival. What is a toy for a child? Metaphorically, I want to get it. That's a hint. I want to get it. The body perceives this as an incoming morsel, one that I cannot get. I am stressed. And that is a threat to survival because I can't get the morsel. What will happen to a child? The child glands will literally begin to enlarge, in the literal sense of the word. The conflict's active phase, the stress, the right gland increases in size as a result of reaction to an incoming morsel. The child does not experience any pain or feelings. He's just crying, Mom, I want a toy. At the same time, he does not want to eat some soup and he does not want to go to the kindergarten. How this is perceived by the body? Stress, outgoing morsel. I don't want this, I need to expel it, I need to reject it. The left gland gets inflamed. If we are like this, uh, I drew it the other way around for the right-handed people. Uh, the right size is assigned to incoming morsel and the left size to the outgoing one. The child's tonsils increase in size in order to produce more mucus so that he receives this desirable piece and expels an unwanted one. And now let's assume that the mother has bought a toy. A child, for instance, did not go to a kindergarten or forgot about it, fell asleep and so on. There is no more stress, the body goes into the healing phase. But this extra tissue needs to be removed. Remember this, in our body everything is healed by swelling or inflammation. What happens in the tonsils? Inflammation. What does mom say? Oh, you ate an ice cream or you went out without a scarf and so on. Guys, this has nothing to do with the cold. Well, it does, but indirectly. I'll explain why. That is, we can enhance the cold phase of stress with the help of cold. 
we can intensify it and the body will quickly switch to the healing phase. But there should already be some presence of stress in the psyche. This explains why we sometimes get sick and sometimes we don't. When there is a conflict situation inside us, cold just intensifies it and we enter the healing phase later. When such situation does not exist, well, I can walk around naked. Here's a story. Until the age of 25, I used to know that you can't go outside after a shower for two hours or you'll get sick. I was taught this by my mom. Mom used to say, don't go outside for two hours after taking a shower. Even if you get dry, you'll get sick. After the age of 25, I went out and what do you think happened? I used to dry myself completely. After an hour or two and a half, I swear, I started to have a runny nose. What was my body starting to do? Defend itself, because the authority said it was dangerous. Mother is the authority figure up to the age of three. Everything she says your body records as a mutable truth. Even if you don't remember this, the body records the feelings that mother transmits. Under the age of three, a child doesn't have his own consciousness. He lives by relying on mother's feelings. Now imagine that you're a small child, you go to the hospital with your mother, mother is your authority, she means the whole world to you, and then something white comes out, some kind of an impulse is produced, and your world shudders. Your world is experiencing stress or anxiety. What will the child's body record? That besides my world, there is another world that decides something. And later, when you go to the hospital as an adult, even though nothing hurts, you're already scared, and you don't understand why, and not only you don't understand, you don't even question yourself. Why am I scared? Because in childhood, it stressed your mother out. Back at the maternity hospital, for example, because something went wrong, a child was taken away, something was scary, it was possible to get sick or infected or so on. During the healing phase, a child's tonsils get inflamed. This is the healing phase. Smart mothers treat this with some ice cream. If anyone doesn't know, you can reduce inflammation with the help of ice cream but on one condition that conflict situations are removed from the psyche and there is no possibility of a relapse. Because now you have distracted him, taken him to somewhere, he's forgotten about the toy, tonsils have got inflamed, and then you went to the store again, he saw the same toy, the body will move into the active conflict phase again, and the tonsils will begin to increase in size again, but there will be more severe inflammation. And the process will become more complicated, because of this, tonsils are usually removed. Doctors just don't know what to do. They see that something is happening. Doctors describe the process itself. Diabetes, for instance. You go in and say, my sugar level is increased, and the doc starts to identify the parts of this whole process. He identifies that insulin is not secreted because the pancreatic islets do not produce it. That's it. For you, it becomes an explanation. But why does my pancreas produce insulin? Why? No one asks this question, and whoever asks, they will be told that the immune system is weak, the ecology isn't good enough, and you're not eating healthy. And with this universal set of answers, which is given to your every question, you go and live, and then you sit down and start drinking. Well, it's a celebration, diabetes, it should be celebrated to be recovered. And when they ask you, you reply, well, insulin, pancreatic islets, the neighbor is sitting and thinking, what kind of pancreatic islands? Well, probably, yeah, sure, let's have another drink. So, is this how it happens, or is it not? Not this way, right? Do you understand a little about tonsils? All the inflamed tonsils are responsible for it. Even among you adults, if you feel that something hurts here sometimes on the right side, or if you're right-handed, ask yourself, what is it that I wanted to get so bad and I didn't get it? I was going to tell you about it in my previous seminar, I mentioned it and then forgot, because as always, I didn't have enough time. Because now I don't mind timing, I'm just speaking, I want to give more and more and more. So, and I was waiting for the seminar as well, because I wanted everything to work out so bad that my right tonsil here increased in size. And on the day of the seminar it became painful, because that was it, we already started to implement it, the extra tissue was no longer needed, my body perceived it as a morsel. Well, look, the morsels can be verbal, visual, or even metaphorical. All that you can imagine as a morsel. I want a car, I want a child, I want a seminar. All of this is perceived as a morsel. The reason why the body reacts with tonsils or anything else is a generic predisposition. An answer can be found in psychogenetics. That is, if my mother ran away from a lion, then I had a gene of fear of lions. 
But if I live in a place where there is not a single line, then the gene remains dormant. But more often we live in the same environment as our parents, and that's why we get the same set of reactions, emotions as they have. You are all your parents. Accept it right away for at least one minute and things will become easier for you. You will immediately get to the zero points from which you will begin to change and become yourself. Anyone who denies it, who doesn't want to be like mom or like dad, you will become them even more. Just because you deny it, but it is in the body, another conflict is created because of which you experience uncomfortable emotions. Why is my life like that? Why am I so angry? Why am I uncomfortable? And so on. Accept that you are just like your parents. After that, you will begin to change. Okay, look, so what else can we say about morsel conflicts or endoderm? Where is the air conditioner here? Okay, right. So I'm running away from a lion. And the lungs, for me and for you, are a basic need. If I don't breathe, I die. I know that those of you who aren't at the seminar for the first time have already heard about this probably several times, but listen again. So, I'm running away from a lion, and for me, the lungs, that is, if I don't breathe, I die, right? That means if any one of us doesn't breathe, we die immediately. During the stress, we can die very quickly. We won't even last one minute because oxygen intake increases and the body needs more oxygen because it escapes danger. So if I don't breathe, I die. For the body, a lack of oxygen is perceived as a direct fear of death. I don't breathe means that I've already died. I may not drink, I may not eat, I may not even see the sun for a few days, but I can survive for some time. If I don't breathe, I'm dying. So I'm running away from a lion. Let's say I have been running away from it for several days, right? For an emotion to biologize, you should suffer from it for several days. Four days are enough. And when you don't know what to do, you just stress out more and more. And then biology is turned on to help you, just as the body has always done in nature. So I've been running away from a lion for four days. And I can't run away. I don't know what to do. The body will switch on the biology. For me, a lion is a direct fear of death. Metaphorically, this is a lack of oxygen. For the body, the direct fear of death is a lack of oxygen. The body begins to grow a tumor in the lungs, lung cancer. While I'm running away from a lion for four or five days, a tumor is growing in my lungs. The body saves me so that I can breathe in more oxygen and run away from danger so that I can breathe and inhale enough oxygen. I'm running away from a lion. The tumor is growing, I don't feel anything. Why do they say that oncological diagnoses are discovered either at the last stage or totally by accident? Because nothing hurts. Because while the tumor is growing, the body, therefore, is in a stress-active phase. It is escaping from danger. But when something hurts, you cannot run away from a lion, can you? Therefore, there is no pain at all in the stress phase. Why is it so difficult to correlate in general that all diseases come from stress? Because in general, nothing hurts during stress. And when you already feel pain, it means that the body has entered the healing phase. In the head, you already let go of the situation and you're like, damn, everything was so cool, but I got sick. I run away from a lion and got into the cave. The lion is no longer there, that is, there's no danger and the body enters a healing phase. And the tumor is in the lungs. And what do you think will happen? The body produces microbacteria and tubercle bacillus to work. The tubercular decay of the tumor begins. And if you go to the hospital at that moment, me for example, I'll be diagnosed with tuberculosis. And if I go to the hospital during this phase, the diagnosis will be lung cancer. Lung tumor, lung cancer and tuberculosis are two phases of the same biological program. But they make two separate diagnoses, both of them fatal. You'll be immediately told go to church. Well, depending, of course, on the stage. Is this clear or not? Well, do you at least hear me? Do you? What did you want to ask, Snow White? I would like to ask, if a morsel is desirable, but rejection occurs, does it mean that you always need to satisfy your impulses? Well, simply accept the fact that you cannot get everything you want. Just say yes to this fact. What's the point? Why is emotion biologized? Because you don't realize what to do here. 
I want it and that's all I needed and that's all. Business coaches told me here that I need to earn it. Yes, I attended and screamed at Tony Robbins seminars. Yes, I go. Then I go around like this. I need to do this. And meanwhile, the body is unable to do it. We're not all aimed at success or something. We are not aimed at it. Our body just lives. Yes, it lives for something, but not to run somewhere and so on. Relate to what you can do. Ask yourself, can I do this? And the consciousness always tells you yes or no. Well, if it says no, accept it. Why are you all rushing there? Why do you all need this? Of course, no one is to blame. This is the ideology. We are all coreless. We need an ideology. We need a leader. Always. We can't do anything on our own. Drop us off on the island and say, create something of your own. We won't create anything. We can't do anything, guys. That's why we come together in groups. And this, by the way, comes from the third embryonic germ layer. Why did it even appear? Why do we even have hemispheres? Why did they evolve after all? Why did they begin to evolve four million years ago? Why is this happening? I still don't get it. Well, there is a child. You cannot tell him not to desire. He will continue to want further. And how old is the child, for instance? Well, I don't have a child. Well, for example, I mean. You gave me an example, didn't you? Can you explain it to him with the help of feelings or not? Well, it just doesn't matter in reality. Everything is good. Except that now you don't have it. Tell him. Accept that you don't have it now. Say yes to that. Accept that you don't have it. I love you anyway. Come here. We'll talk about it at the end. Why stress has become a disease for a child, or for you, or for me, but for someone it won't happen. Hello. Hi. And what's your name? Masha. Why are you so happy? Normally, happy people don't come here. They don't come here at all, the happy ones. So, uh, what have you got, Masha? Pimples constantly pop up on my face. Pimples. Well, I mean, there is always rush on my skin. Now, if I ask you to visualize any picture, memory, or maybe a person, who will come to your mind first? Oh, there's someone flashed. My mom? Yes. And now please visualize your pimples in your imagination. How do you see them? It can be in the mirror, whatever. Do you see? Well, just see your pimples in your imagination, the way you saw them once, for example. What? Can't you do it? As soon as mom is remembered, she retreats right away, immediately forgot everything. Well, can't you still see? So you don't have any pimples then? Have you ever seen yourself with pimples? Never seen them. Why did you come here then? I don't really understand. Oh, she's just sparkling here all over now. I understand. I'm just kidding, really. When did you get pimples? At what age? Two or three years. And when did you have there? I mean, when you were two or three. Well, I meant I got it about two or three years ago. Oh, two or three years ago. Let me hold you by the fingers so that I can feel. You don't even know how she's cracking up. You have no idea. But this doesn't mean that I'm strong or something. It means that she has a predisposition to react with such feelings to everything that happens. I don't do anything at all. I just... Well, it's already being passed to my hand, and I'll start now. What are we going to do? Breathe. Well, what's the point? Pimples won't go away if you breathe. What happened there anyway? I wanted you to catch that. Then it comes again. There it comes again. What happened there? Come on. Any picture, any memory. That's it. My mother used to say it this way. That's it. Come on, this one. That's the one. What do you see there? Whatever you see, just say it. Just say it. I don't see anything. Well, you're lying. So, so do you want to live with these pimples? Well, she's clenching. Something is clicking and her fist clenches. So that it is. It's just that maybe her brain is afraid to realize it. 
The thing is that we don't remember how this or that situation started because we felt so uncomfortable that the body forces it out of the psyche. What are you thinking about right now? What is that? Now you're thinking about this. But I cannot catch it. Can't you catch it? Who is it related to? Tell me a word. Who is it related to? Who is it related to? There, in, in your head right now. A man. And what's his name? What is his name? Just say it. You can do it. It's very safe in here. Come on. Okay, you don't have to say the name. Father? All right, and what did he do? Just say it. Say it, come on. Come on, that thing. Come on. I don't know. What did he do? What did he say? What comes to your mind? Oh, come on, I'm not pushing you because you will run away. What did your father say or do? Come on, any memory with dad. Any memory with your dad. Well, actually he said that I'm not pretty. Not pretty. Okay, now agree with him that you're not pretty. I'm not pretty. Yes. And how does it feel? And immediately she relaxed her hand. So, is any kind of therapy still needed? She started to breathe and to laugh. Yes, now ask your body, do you have pimples now? Yes or no? Shall we applaud or not? Thank you. You write to me or come to me later, okay? Um, there are some things to polish up, but the result is already there. All right, and we'll immediately proceed to the second tissue. Well, look, we're not discussing a thyroid gland. Or should we? Who has thyroid gland problem? Who has hypothyroidism? All of these are morsel conflicts. It's when a person shares something with someone and when he shares, he cannot get a morsel. It can be anything like inheritance or business. The body starts to enlarge the pancreas, producing more juice that is, well, come on, do it. And now this morsel will come and will digest it. But if you don't get it, you'll get a pancreatitis. You'll find a pancreatitis in the healing phase. In the conflict active phase, you don't feel anything, nothing hurts. Pain is present only in the healing phase. I have Anya here, a photographer. She had been suffering with it for three years. It took us 10 minutes. I just stopped by to get a video. She said it hurt a lot. I touched it. It was swollen. It was a ball, literally. After 10 minutes, I left her. Several months have passed already, and she doesn't drink anything, she doesn't take anything. I mean, pills, and everything's great with her. It was enough to explain what it was. After the seminar, some of you will be blown away. I wanted to say this at the end, but I'll say it now. Some of you will enter the healing phase. Runny nose, cold, and so on. Rejoice. I'm serious, rejoice. Each and every one of you will have individual reaction. Some people are washed over after the seminar. At least five or ten people. And two people usually get pregnant. And there's normally one man among them, I'd like to say. Also, I'd like to talk about tracks. There are some reminders for the body. Even for me, sometimes it's difficult to pull a person out of this permanently repetitive chronic process because he constantly comes across the reminders. How did I begin the seminar? I say a word and it reminds you of some illness. The stress is activated. You felt tense. I said oncology and even though I am Anton Antonov, you were tense. Do you understand what the point is? This is a reminder, a track for the body. And during a stressful situation in which, for example, I was told that I wasn't pretty, my body records everything that was around me. We don't know yet why it records this thing for one person and different thing for another. But it is clear that there are many different things recorded. What kind of smells, what kind of trees were present, what the feeling was under the feet, what birds were singing. Well, figuratively speaking, the reminders. In order to activate the same problem next time, because it is associated with discomfort and therefore with the threat of survival, with stress. I was told that I was ugly, 
My body recorded where I was at that moment, what was happening around, and then nobody tells me that again. But the body constantly sees these reminders and activates this program. Why is it doing that? Because when I was running away from a lion, my body recorded everything. And since everything is aimed at one thing, survival, next time I go, there's no lion, but the leaves and the trees are the same, the birds are the same, the smells are the same. What will the body do? It will activate the same fear again, because, God forbid, a lion appears. You do understand what the point is, don't you? Did you get what the track means? I showed you this. I said, I am oncology, and there was a fear response in you. Why? Because oncology is dangerous, therefore a threat to survival. You always need to be alert when you hear this word. Do you get the point? Look, now we'll discuss the second embryonic germ layer, the old mesoderm, and then take a break. This is our cerebellum. This is what began to form 40 million years ago. The mesoderm germ layer. The embryo mesoderm germ layer. This is our cerebellum. The psychosomatics conventionally divide the mesoderm into two groups, the old one, which is the cerebellum and the dermis, and the younger one, that is the grey or sometimes called white matter of the brain, the so-called brain parenchyma. This is what we're always told in school. Well, it was like this, at least in my case. Why, don't you have enough grey matter in your brain? Because it is believed that our neurons are concentrated there. But I'll tell you a little secret, there are approximately 86 billion neurons in the brain and 70 billions of them are located in the brain stem. So that's the one in charge, guys. Setting goals, you know, write down the goal and it will come true, that is all operated from there. And it really works. There is a section in the brain, the reticular formation in the brain stem. This is the section of neurons that is responsible for targeting. That is, when you decide to buy a new car, and it turns out that there are a lot of them already. Have you noticed that? Everyone notices that. You want something and you start seeing it. This is how the reticular formation, the brainstem, works. Therefore, if you write something down, the brain really starts looking for it everywhere. For example, you write down, I want to go to Udmurtia, and the body unconsciously begins searching for all the possibilities to go to Udmurtia. This is already programmed. This is what I mean when I say that thought is secondary. Why do we write it down? A goal which is not written down is not a goal at all. Let me tell you something. This is not esoterics. In 2014, I was sitting in the office at work where, in principle, everything was going fine for me, but I was feeling terrible inside. I wrote down in a notebook, I want to leave the city in two years and move to Moscow and the notebook was lost afterwards. I quit the job, gathered everything in boxes, took them somewhere in the apartment and placed them in the basement. Well, not exactly basement, but the, the storage place. And I moved to Moscow in 2016, in August. On September the 2nd, I returned to Tver to collect my belongings, went downstairs, found a box. Look, goosebumps. I found this box, opened this notebook, it was written in August 2014, in two years I want to move to Moscow. I was shocked. I wrote a post about it and said, guys, a goal that is not written down is not a goal at all. And then when I began to practice, well not practice really, but study the brain research, I learned about the reticular formation, the neuron section, and I understood how it worked. I understand that a cat really does not care why it is warm in here. Maybe some warm water pipes are passing through this place or something. She simply comes, feels it's warm, sits down, feels good. Many of us don't need any of this. That's the way I am. I'm interested in this. I don't really know what else to do on this earth unless I research and pass information along to a large audience. And maybe I should have a baby and everything will be great then. Maybe everything will be clear right away and... Uh, I'll be like, ah, I don't really care about you people, go and learn by yourself. So, the mesoderm layer. The old mesoderm layer began to form when we started to crawl out of water. We needed the skin layer. This is not the epidermis, not the top layer, this is the bottom one, the dermis. We began to climb out of the water and something could hit us, bite us, cause some damage to us. The dermis began to form for protection, but just at the time the thickness started to form. For us now, we already have it formed, the body maintains it. At that time, it was just being developed. 
And it was, how do I call it, a mammal, a reptile, what, what was that? An amphibian, yes. If something used to hit it, then the dermis thickened in that area. It began to develop and then it thickened. And now we have this thickening in the form of a program. Take pimples, for instance. That's the dermis, that's not the epidermis. This is the subcutaneous layer. In principle, both cosmetology and medicine explain this to us. However, the conflicts have become metaphorical. We are not often get hit hard physically. Well, if somebody hits us, a bruise developed and so on. But nowadays, we are being hit metaphorically. I was told that I was ugly. Where did that hit me? In the face. And I'm going around thinking about it for several days. And after four days, I didn't resolve it. The body unloads and displaces the memory of someone telling me something into the unconscious. This emotion begins to biologize. Biologize in order to protect us because the body knows how to do it. And the body begins to thicken the dermis on the face to protect me from the following attack. But we have the programmed thickness and when we go to bed, we leave the tracks, the reminders. There is no dangers anymore. The body enters the healing phase. Outstanding students, how is everything healed in our body? By swelling or inflammation. What do I see in the morning when I get up? The dermis needs to be removed. The body activates the inflammation process to remove the dermis. Therefore, I wake up and I have pimples. Everyone has experienced that sometimes you get up in the morning and you have a pimple. Haven't you? Yes or no? Well, of course you do. In the morning, constantly relapsing. There are constantly reminders of something. Most likely, there were several conflicts. Not only one, but when they said something. It can be any kind of words that are perceived as an attack. It rarely happens to me when they say something unpleasant in my face. Guys, I am not God. I am human. I also get sick. No one can run away from it completely. It is impossible. Our body evolves as a result of this all. And we resolve that with Masha. Masha and I resolve this topic. And it will be recorded in her gene that it is safe and her children will no longer receive the same strategy. Getting sick is the way to transmit healthier information forward more adapted information. Stress is a method of adaptation. Nobody can avoid stress. It doesn't work that way. Nobody can avoid this phase. These life coaches who teach you, you'll always be happy, you'll always be healthy or something like that. Well, that's fucking nonsense. We'll edit this out. That's a lie, guys. The body isn't programmed to live like that. Evolution never intended to avoid stress. Stress is a method of adaptation. Due to this, we adapt to constantly changing circumstances. So, pimples are there. I got up in the morning and I went to school and again, there are those guys or maybe girls who said that I was ugly. What's in my body again? It enters the same active phase again. There is a thickening of the dermis all over again. What makes acne look so awful? Let's call it unattractive. Because there is a constant relapses, up and down, that's all. Melanomas are the same as pimples, just the intensity is higher. The intensity is so high that the body already activates melanoma. What do we call melanoma? We call it a healing phase, when it is already visible. So to speak, when cancer is already manifesting. This is a healing phase, again, because of the relapses, it may look unattractive. This, by the way, is the epidemic of leprosy in the 16th century. This is melanoma. That's what it is. These conflicts are not only called the attack conflicts. As we've just seen it, the attack was present. But they're also called the conflicts of intrusion or devaluation. Why were people thought to be infected with leprosy? Because... What do people feel if they come close into contact with someone like that? They consider it as an attack on the skin, and the body begins to defend itself. And a person's skin will change, and the person is told, OK, that's it, go to the leper colony. And they take him away, put on a hoodie, wrap him up, and then he dies. Well, thanks God, it doesn't take place anymore. Now we know that is melanoma. Melanoma and pimples are one and the same thing. Can you imagine? In general, there are only 172 special biological programs in psychosomatics. You open any medical reference book. Open the ICD, please, the International Classification of Diseases. If we place a list on the road, it can reach Ubud or even the borders of Changi. And that's how long the list would be. 172 in total. 
The point is that the pimples and melanoma belong to one program and everything in between, everything related to dermis, belongs to the same program. Only the intensities are different, that's all. Well, shall we have a break? Or questions? Let's ask questions after the break. Thanks. Now, applaud everybody. Okay, let's see if uh, everyone is here or not. And the most beautiful one? All right, there she is. She's uh, putting the makeup on. Okay, right, so I touched upon the synergy subjects a little. The emergence. There is such a concept in physics when the sum of the individual parts of the system is not equal... Um, well, wait a second. Right. It's not equal to their individual indicators. That is, for example, if we take 100 units of no matter what, something that we took as 100 units, after combining them together in one system, we'll get 150. Although in terms of quantity, it's 100. I don't remember the exact definition, but it's about... Um, well, let's take a rope, for instance. The tensile strength of its individual thread is 1. But if we put them together, when we combine them all together, it increases. Do you get it? That is, it becomes even stronger. This is called the emergence of the system. In general, this explains why we're stronger together. Why we can do more when united rather than separately. Now it has been replaced by the buzzword synergy. Synergy, probably something like that. Maybe it's not a buzzword, but at least I get to hear it a lot. Now let's continue. Now you can ask some questions and I'll answer them. If there are any, although I have already been asked a few. Can I ask you, just wondering, in practice, what kind of cases were the most complicated, apart from oncology? What kind of disease it was? Well, I'm currently working with several people with HIV. The initial conflicts are established. That's fine. And I just requested from all three of them to go and get tested. I asked them to test the viral load to see the current condition. And imagine what? None of the three have done it so far. One of them immediately got cold, another one forgot something and disappeared. I don't remind them anymore. I understand what it is. You cannot lead someone who is not thirsty to a waterhole. Three people and none of them went for a checkup. They don't know about one another. They have a feeling that, well, ah, okay, why would I? They don't know that I already have three of them and none of them goes for a checkup. Why is this happening? This is called secondary gain. Each of them has so much tied to it. Relatives know about it and this and that. And due to this diagnosis, they don't do something or the opposite. They do something. Some of them have their lives tied to this. They earn on it. That is, they sell some therapies, I mean medication. They have some resources to unite such people. How they can refuse? And in my face, they say, yeah, okay. And then the body switches to the automatic mode. I cannot go, I got sick, I went somewhere else, I don't know. And so on. Three people. And they continue to take pills? Not all of them. Not all of them. Someone has given up on therapy and uh, not dying and everything is fine. It's just that in our country, in Russia, we're not talking about Indonesia. HIV cannot be denied. We have HIV dissidents. Well, not HIV dissidents itself, but the denial of uh, HIV, as far as I'm concerned, is prosecuted in our country. Therefore, I won't talk about it any longer, but I'll just say that HIV is not as scary as it is described to us and to you. And in terms of therapy, when a person has symptom, but it doesn't go away, it lingers for a long time. No, there's no such thing. Uh, it simply means that I'm not his specialist. He was mistaken, and uh, we're sending him to someone else, and uh, everything will be fine there. Well, I haven't experienced such thing that the symptoms didn't disappear at all, no. I mean, even those people whose symptoms did not disappear came back to me again later. There are so many cases. Just look at the reviews. During the last case, for instance, there was this girl with pain, vaginismus in short. 
with terrible pain during sex and we worked with her. She paid me for one session and since I like to work to get immediate results, I told myself I'd do it in one session. And so we worked with her for six months for the price of one session. For half an hour, for 15 minutes, four meetings in total. There, you can check her review saying that it is possible to have sex without pain. At first we worked for one hour and a half hour and then four sessions of 15 minutes each. Well, probably that was the most difficult one. Basically, as we have touched upon the topic of physiology, how many experts recommend working through physiology? This is basically what we were taught in the Soviet Union. It doesn't matter what difference it makes, what you have in your life or in your head, you have a symptom in your body, remove it, undergo the chemical therapy or go take a pill. They didn't teach us to correlate the fact that our psyche and everything that happens there is directly related to our body. We were not told that psyche and somatic are related. We were told, well, you feel bad? Do some more work. You feel sad? Do some more work. Bored? Go and do some work. That's what we've been taught. But in general, there is some truth to this. Some necessity, because work or any physical activity reduces the conflict's intensity. The conflict mass is disposed, but the strategy is not deactivated. There are many questions about the strategies and how to turn them off and with the help of what and whether you need to retrain yourself. Now we'll talk about this a bit more. So very often doctors recommend sports and it really works, but it does not work completely. The body does not deactivate the strategy. Look, I go, I come across a lion, I get scared. I have a strategy to react to a lion with fear. No matter how strong I am, next time I come across a lion, I'll run away again. Surely, well, physical exercises help me not to linger in this. But if I come across a lion again, the body will activate the same stress. And I certainly will run away. I mean, if you feel in a response to whatever you're advised to do, do it. Go to the gym, do some practice. Yoga is generally a unique tool for reducing the intensity. And for those who do it all the time, something is really deactivated. But again, no matter how sincerely I forgive this lion, when I come across it in a month, the body will react the same. From evolutionary psychology, we already know that there is a specific context and a specific reaction. And until a reaction is replaced, the body will continue to reproduce it whenever such situation arises. And if I would sit with a psychologist, we'll hug this lion, forgive it, kiss it all over and tell him that he's a friend. And then I leave the psychologist feeling easy and feeling great. And then I come across a lion in a year and how should the body react? It won't get up and say, oh, hello, my friend, because this is a danger. It will react the way it can. It will run away. And that's the whole point. As for everything else, use whatever is recommended to you. Often there are questions like, do you go to pharmacy? But damn well, of course I do. If I have a temperature, a healing phase, I feel uncomfortable with a temperature of 38. I just can't bear it. I feel bad. Of course, I'll take a painkiller to reduce the fever. And I just know that the more I take it, the longer the healing phase will last. The body will still take whatever it needs. It will finalize the process. This explains why when you get sick and you don't take any pills, you just have a rest for a day or two and you feel better. You feel as if you were upgraded, like a software upgrade on a computer. You feel great. And as soon as you stuff yourself with antibiotics or something, you go to work shattered. And then they ask you, what's the matter with you? And you're like, yeah, I'm recovering from an illness. But the illness is not to blame here. You just didn't give the body enough time to rest while it's recovering from cold. That's why they say that children and even pediatricians say so, and they're generally right. Saying that a cold is for children, their immune system is getting stronger as a result. Not only their immune system is getting stronger, but their adaptation to external conditions is vastly improved. Imagine that a child lives at home, he has his own toys, his own room, and suddenly he's taken to some institution, so to speak, and there are a bunch of little people like him. Everyone is sharing everything, taking away things and toys. Now he needs to share a space with others and get used to different noises. What is the child experiencing? Stress. The child is stressed. His body begins to adapt to new changing conditions. He comes home from this stressful environment and what will be activated? The healing process, a runny nose, maybe a cough, what will mom say? There you are and so on. And the child is just adapting, just give him some rest. 
But if this happens often, of course, it should be resolved. In that case, most likely, work should be done with child's mother and not the child. But a conversation with the child would also be very helpful. Ask him, what do you feel, rather than what do you dislike about kindergarten? Teach everyone to talk about their feelings. There is no need to talk about the situation itself. Ask him, how do you feel in this situation? The body will release the emotion. It won't be biologized anymore and it won't be stuck inside. But we'll talk about this a bit later also. This is what I said about how to discharge and how not to get sick. Well, you have to get yourself in these states, of course. I wanted to ask, all this information on self-diagnosis, why you have this or that disease, all books, Louisa Hay... Well, you see, when your emotions are like this, all books about Louisa Hay. They kind of say that. Yeah, 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 I understand. I kind of started to dig into this trouble. Yes, they say that it happened because you have a grudge against your relative. Damn, but what kind of grudge? Why did you get offended? Why? When did it happen? Yes, in fact, it turns out that you cannot solve this problem on your own without someone watching from outside. Well, this system here, when it becomes our natural science, and it will, we've already begun to hear it. Everyone here is interested in it. We will learn to realize it ourselves and quickly. At the moment, you and I are at a stage when we just begin to take our first steps into this. The very first step. It is difficult without a specialist so far. If you have already realized, then, of course, you need to get acquainted with the system and understand what comes from what. Well, you need to know what happens in which organ. What kind of process is in progress, and I mean, is it ulceration or is it tumor, in order to realize what happens. Of course, the body always answers these questions. If you ask yourself, what is it connected to, whatever pops up or comes in your mind will be the answer. But the thing is that sometimes we're so full of activated feelings that we cannot even realize it. It inhibits us from going there. That's why a specialist is needed. Most of the diseases are already initiated in childhood. It's just that the intensity is not so high in childhood and it does not manifest itself symptomatically. As we age, we add more intensity here and the symptoms begin to come out. And when we resolve the last situation, it will feel easier if the symptom has already decreased a little, but it will not disappear completely. It's necessary to dig into childhood and in childhood everything is buried so deeply already that you need a professional assistance. Of course, if you have developed yourself enough, then you can realize childhood as well. I consider myself an advanced person in this field, but I still constantly seek help from my colleagues. Just a couple of times a month, maybe a couple of times a week, do it as often as you can. It's not necessary to go to Anton Antonov or Mikhail Filaev. Just make sure that these specialists know what they actually do. Because when you go to a psychologist with a diagnosis, you can only accidentally resolve the initial cause but the psychologist doesn't know where to dig into. When a person comes to me with a tumor or with asthma, I know the context. I know what is going on in his body and I begin to look for these particular situations in different age periods. And I drag out corresponding situations because clients request referred to asthma. A psychologist would dig into emotion only, not knowing that it relates to asthma. Psychologists, they're cool. I mean, they're totally great. But if your request refers to some diagnosis, it's better to apply to a competent psychosomatic therapist in the first place. Psychologists are also needed. I myself had a meeting here with Daria Milai uh, just the other day, and I liked her very much. Any other questions? And what is allergy? Allergy is always a separation conflict. This is the simplest diagnosis which is resolved after the seminars. One girl had been allergic to the sun for several years and she was not able to get out of it. I dragged her on the stage and she didn't open up completely. And I said, okay, move on. I told her to move on because she was not ready yet. And after a while, I had a response from her. That's it. I don't have it anymore. Everything is gone. I just explained to her what it was all about. This refers to the ectoderm, there are the territorial conflicts. Now, we'll quickly touch upon these terms. This is a territorial conflict, and the areas where we have this embryonic germ layer react to this. This is our epidermis, the top layer. I am my territory. Well, there's also a territory in the office, or a house, or anywhere. 
But allergies always refer to separation conflicts if it's an allergy in particular. And the allergens, the things that we call allergens, these are the tracks I talked about earlier. These are the reminders for the body about a dangerous situation. You'll find out that it was present in your situation connected to the separation. The sun was shining, you were eating nuts, drinking milk and so on. If the allergy is from childhood, then it belongs to mother. She was drinking milk, parted with someone or something, and it was stressful for her. She felt it inside, but did not show it outside. It belongs to mother. It's also very easy to dig into. Always ask yourself. Now, for example, if you're allergic to nuts, ask yourself, have I parted with someone while eating nuts? In 80% of cases, you'll remember this right away. When you ask a question, leave it there and go on with your life, and then suddenly the answer will come. If the situation was very traumatic and I asked people where it happened, who did you get separated from? When someone tells me I have an allergy, I say even without going into a therapy session, you just tell me where it happened and who you parted with. And it turns out that that situation only lasted for a fleeting moment, but the body was stressed. That was important for the body for some reason. Maybe you didn't plan to live or to have children with this person, but for some reason this person was biologically important for the body. And maybe you retreated into yourself a little but didn't pay attention to it because we were not taught to pay attention to our feelings. Only now we start to get in touch with our emotions. Different practices teach us, feel, identify your emotions. And psychosomatics works 60% through feelings and emotions. So a person does not remember this. And when she remembers, she explains, oh, that's it. I was eating nuts when I met him in Turkey. We slept together, we went on a date, went to a theme park, and then he said that his feeling faded. And I couldn't even think that that was the reason. This is one of the real cases. Just one. Because for some reason, so many breakups have happened in Turkey. And by the way, Egypt is in a second place. Okay, I understand why. Because at that time, those were the fashionable countries and popular resort destinations. Yes, now it's Bali. In five years, I'll be resolving separation situations in Bali. And what is the minimum interval between the active and healing phase? Well, there's no interval at all. You enter the following phase immediately. Well, sometimes it happens that it takes a long time. When the stress is simply over and the phase begins, that is two or three days difference. Yes, a healing process is activated right away, but the stress is coming. You mean, what interval? This spot right here, here you are still under stress and here you already begin to recover. But the symptoms don't pop in such a way that you are going and going and then bam, temperature. No, it takes a long time for the process to begin. The body is also being prepared. You understand that everything that you know about diagnosis, it's not a disease. It's a biological adaptation of the body to changing conditions that you cannot accept or understand. This is a biological adaptation of the body. It has always lived like this in nature. But why don't animals suffer from chronic diseases? Who can guess? Why don't wild animals get chronic diseases? Because they don't linger in it. Something happens to an animal here on its territory. It doesn't matter what, it either begins to fight or leaves the territory, escapes. And stress is relieved. That's it. The program runs in a single instance. The tissue is strengthened in that area. For example, if it's in the bone, then it's the restitution on the bone. We'll get to that now. With what you got sick and recovered, guys, it means you evolved in this very much. If it comes back to you, it means that the program was not completed here in your head. Because if you get sick and involved in this, it will never return. No longer return. And what about children's allergies? It belongs to a mother. Until the age of three, it always comes from a mother. Even until the age of four or maybe five. Dig into a mom's situations immediately. Until the age of three, a child depends on the feelings of his mother. I already told you this. But can he resolve this? By himself? How? At the age of three or four? Well, uh, in the sense that a person has an allergy from birth, can he resolve the program in himself? Of course, of course. So didn't you see the regression I performed earlier? It's the same. The body knows everything. Everything that happened to you is recorded, just recorded in the genes. We have learned to drag it to the level of feelings and it's always possible to verbalize feelings. And what about the nature of coughing? The nature of coughing? Well, there are several reasons. This is right here. We'll talk about the bronchi now. Many of you will get the answers. Can I ask a question? It may not be very... Come on, without an introduction. It's always like that with you. Jacques Fresco said that he found a cancer in a rabbit. 
A single program is run, and this is natural, everyone has it. It's just a biological response. And if a rabbit is very afraid of death and cannot do anything about it, the body will activate lung tumor. It will run away or be devoured. It ran away, the program is deactivated, and its body will be healed. And as I said, wild animals are not prone to chronic diseases. Only pets are. And who can guess why pets get sick? From the owners. Absolutely right. When I just started my practice, I had several clients whose animals had brittle bones. Several people. And it was always the same. As soon as we removed the situation of self-devaluation from the owner, the animal started to jump around and it didn't break anything. A dog with an upset stomach. Same thing, it had something there, was taken to doctors, given injections, and then we removed the indigestible things from the owner's head, the situation which she cannot accept here, and the body biologically perceives as a morsel. She tries to digest it, increasing acidity. All your gastritis refers to this, stomach cancer refers to this, indigestible morsel or territorial conflict. Indigestible morsels. When a person cannot accept the situation, he can neither let it go or talk about it. Disloyalty, murder, I've come across a lot of things in practice, actually. We'll just have to edit and cut this part out, otherwise they'll ask me and ask who I counsel there. The body perceives it, it simply begins to help you biologically, it's just helping. There you go, I'll digest it now. But when it's a relapse, a process begins which we call pathological. There is psychological, there is pathological. There are doctors here, doctor is having a rest somewhere in the back, well, okay. Anyway, who else wanted to ask a question? Yes, this is what we'll get to after the questions. What about blood and bone marrow? By the way, you just aptly mentioned the bone marrow. This is the strongest conflict of this germ layer. Wow, how cool you are, and uh, I like you all. I mean it. Very cool questions, you're all great. When you sit in the back, the information doesn't reach there so well, but I'm glad that you're all here. Seriously, in the front rows, everything is great. And what about the spine? Right now, we'll get to the next step. I know that we're all young here, but the musculoskeletal system does not function so perfectly already, does it? And the doctors say, well, illnesses are getting younger, you're not active enough, and so on. That's how I'm getting another conflict. It seems that I'm not active enough, I'm old now. And what am I getting? Another stress. There are a bunch of such problems all coexisting in us at the same time. You're stressed out because of so many things, aren't you? The wife is saying something there, there is not enough money, the job is not appropriate, I'm too hot, there is this neighbor, there is the car, there is the police, there is Putin, ah. But that's the way it works. You're constantly in something stressful, but just the intensity is low. A disease, it's a point when it's already like this, when it is too much to tolerate. As I said, I was diagnosed with more than 15 diseases and hemorrhoids and gastritis and cholecystitis and cyst in the kidney. My heart was apnea. In short, they predicted an artificial stimulant there. What else was there? A whole bunch. Prostatitis, I already mentioned, didn't I? Psoriasis, I was covered all over. And it all depended on intensity. And as soon as I started working with psychologists, even though I hadn't known about psychosomatics yet, I began to notice that it all reduced. There still was pain, I felt bad, but less. And I began to notice that it depended on my mental state. Yes, it did not disappear completely. I still went to hospitals, did some therapy and so on. Well, that was enough for six months or maybe a year. Ask me a question. Does a cell have a memory? A cell? And where do you think is our DNA? The DNA molecule in every cell. There is nucleic acid in every cell. We're not going to dive into the subject, okay? So what's the question? Well, the question is, is that you work through? Of course, the structure is recorded in the DNA. Everything that you're hearing right now, everything that changes your feelings or attitude towards something, everything is being recorded 24-7, guys. You're all connected 24-7. We'll do some tricks in the end. Let's try and work with as many of you as possible. We'll see all the tricks, we'll see the magic. Maybe somebody's eyesight. By the way, is there anyone with eyesight problems? We'll try to recover somebody's eyesight so that you exclaim, wow, I literally love it when I change the world view. But it's not me, it's information that changes. I'm just a messenger, so to speak, who spreads this virus. 
Information is the most serious virus, guys. And you have a choice with what to infect others, with what kind of information. Just filter. Filter. More questions. Go on. About eyesight. Can you resolve some kind of a person has loss of sight, for example, the eye died completely, retinal necrosis? Rapidly? Well, within two months. Cataract? Well, cataract does not happen so rapidly. Well, retina. That's it. The eye is dead. The right eye is healthy. Retina. Okay. But retina, what is it? Lens, lens, retina. I don't remember what kind of tissue it is, retina. But you always look at the function and understand either I want to see something and cannot, or I don't want to do something, but I still do see it. And the body inhibits you from seeing. In case of cataracts, is that I don't see the future. In this case, it can be, I think retina is ectoderm layer. I don't remember. It's just that when people come to me with eyesight problems, I don't have to give them all this information. I don't use it myself. I know the function of the organ and I know whether it's hypo or hyper. That is either increased or decreased. That is, for example, a thyroid gland, the one that is in the endoderm. If a person has a hypothyroidism, why do we need thyroxine? It speeds up the body. If there is thyrotoxicosis, then a person is not fast enough. It means that a person is stressed because he thinks he doesn't have enough time for something. During the session, I work through it all in a circle and secondary gain and so on. Because, for instance, an unresolved secondary gain does not let the symptom go away. That is, you can work through everything, deactivate all the strategies, but if the secondary gain is not deactivated, the body will not shut it off. We're all social beings and we need a flock. We all need people. An old man went to bed with paralysis. The whole family arrived, right? Will his body shut the symptom off? Of course not, because he knows that everyone will eventually leave, he'll be left alone, and being alone means death. Moreover, it's biologically programmed so. Any fear you have finally leads to what kind of fear? Fear of death, indeed. Before that, there is feeling of being alone and not being able to reproduce. But they always lead to fear of death. If any of you come here, we'll find some stress and I'll start by asking questions like what's next, what's next, what's next, and in the end we'll always find the following answer, I'll die. Well, in such cases we say, well, go on, die. Just die for one minute. And a person immediately feels relaxed. So there's nothing scary about death, guys, and for the soul or for the psyche. As a man of science, I will say for the psyche. But it is the same thing as soul. The idea of death is non-existent for the psyche. During the therapy, there is no problem for the soul to die. To be born again, no problem. This means that maybe this energy does not fly anywhere. It's here. We're all in this shell. We all live in this energy. In reality, something else controls us from within. And perhaps it is leading us along a certain path. Because all of the other 80% I find in parents. But this some kind of a particular mission comes from somewhere else. It seems like the earth is alive and it needs us for something, like our body needs leukocytes and everyone else accomplishes something for it. And this program is installed by it, the one that we must carry out. And maybe I'm carrying out this program to inform people that everything works this way and all diseases refer to this. I believe, as I see it, this is my mission, it comes from somewhere within. I have a question about death. The fact that you don't treat yourself with pills, which of course is fatal in 80% of cases, the fact that you are superhuman, who is able to heal himself with the help of psychological programs, right? Will this delay a person's death? To my mind, no. It seems to me like death... Well, I don't know. It's just that there are people for whom there is natural selection. Those who have to depart this life, he comes to therapy, we communicate, he feels better and he says, yes, I understood everything, and he leaves and disappears. And then I find out that after a year or two, he passed away and didn't do anything. It looks like his body has stopped. You have to leave. Maybe, I don't assure you, I'm not God, I can't answer this question, but I have a feeling the deadline is predetermined, although perhaps this is my blueprint because it is convenient to think that way for some reason. Well, it's convenient for me because it speeds me up. I have some kind of a number, I don't know where it comes from. I've dug into this like 300 times, that I'll pass away at the age of 50. 
The most interesting thing is that in my family, everyone departed this life at the age of 50, 51, 54, or 55, and there is oncology everywhere. And here, the lifeline on my hand, as they describe it to me, I have something terrible awaiting me in my 50s, some kind of a disease or something. It is unclear I'll survive or not. But we know that there is psychogenetics, and if the family survived with the help of this as a result of someone passing away, this will be passed on to generations. For example, a father assaulted a mother and then died at the age of 50. And as a result of this, mother evolved even better. The nature will continue this in the future. This is how I see it. Such information is passed on, which is potentially suitable for the survival of species. Death is important only to us, only for humans. Death is scary. For nature, it's neither good or bad. For nature, there is a concept of uncomfortable, which means that there is a stress. That's it. More questions. I wanted to ask about crossed eyes. Well, a person does not want to see something. We'll look at which eye does not align properly. I don't remember what the exact context is, but it also is related to the function of the organ. I remember there was a man with a little girl. We found out that one of her eyes was badly misaligned. We found out that she had conflicts that initiated in the womb. Parents were arguing, then mother wanted to go somewhere just to escape the situation. We removed this conflict and of course she wore glasses, but very quickly her eye was aligned properly again. I think it took something from 8 months to a year. But we found out that mother wanted to go somewhere in any direction and just to run away somewhere. And consequently a child started to look in the same direction because her mother looked to the side. Everything that a mother feels is an a priori truth for a child. That is, if it's like that out there, I have to be adapted to that. Can you imagine what a baby's body does? How it changes psychologically if a mother thinks that something's wrong with it? Well, it adapts to that as well. Its world says that up there you have to be like this. Its world is stressed by the fact that something is wrong and something works this way and it's necessary to adapt to this. Naturally, a child is born with some kind of abnormality or pathology. This relates to that when people recommend, well, think positive and everything will be great, stop negative thoughts. Well, yes and no. It's just that thought is not primary, feeling is primary. Forget about your thoughts. This explains why you wish not to think about bad things, but sometimes it just doesn't work, because feeling is primary. And if the body has activated some kind of feeling, it means that it senses a threat to survival. Therefore, it is stressed and it will not shut down the negative thinking. That's why they explain that when you go somewhere, you are relieved, because the reminders are no more present for the body. Change your place of residence, go and have some rest and so on. People go on holiday, all illnesses disappear. They return to their homeland and it begins again. Well, doesn't it explain the theory of reminders or tracks? Is there another question? There was such a story with my ears. When I arrived here, my ears were clogged for a long time. Clogged? That is already a healing phase. And then, after a while, it passed. Literally two weeks later, I had a viral infection in my ears. A viral infection? Okay, I'll repeat. This is a healing phase. You arrived. Your body released certain microbes to work in order to get rid of some unnecessary tissue. All these bacteria were already in your body in small quantities. The body activates them so that you can escape. You did not want to hear something or wanted to hear something, but you couldn't. And that something is very important to you for your safety. Mum's voice, for example. There was one of my comrades who had a massive ear ache. What did you want to hear but couldn't? I asked because I saw it was the right ear. And he said to me, I had been expecting a call from a supplier for three days and this moron wouldn't call me. If you interpret the function of the organ, you'll understand what's happening. What's hearing for? To hear something safe. Or to hear something dangerous and to avoid it. Everything is aimed at one purpose, survival. For him, as a restaurant owner, the supplier was very important because what is it tied to? Money, survival. In his case, his body activated, hear it, hear it. He wanted to hear a call and the body helps. There, I hear it. And when the call is heard, an earache begins. Those viruses come out in order to heal everything. And he goes to the hospital and he will be told, well, you have an infection. But what kind of infection, guys? The same thing here? The same thing, exactly. In your case, it's the left ear, to avoid danger. 
to hear something dangerous. Have a look, you are reacting to something. The body nodded. The body always knows what we're talking about. It always feels and it always understands. Even when we speak with some incomprehensible words, it's so unique. And what did they tell us on TV? You're all weak, you're all sick, diseases are getting younger. They just state the fact. The fact that they don't understand where it's coming from. You don't blame anyone. Of course, nobody is to blame for anything. But this is how we evolve. In the context of all humanity, this is a normal movement. In the context of one life, emotions are unpleasant, not good. Well, indeed. Damn, sometimes it's probably even good giving yourself for the good of humanity, but I won't do it. Tell us, please, how do you remove the program? How? Well, you saw it. From what I demonstrated, I already showed you several tools. Acceptance? Well, the girl with pimples. Cool. Acceptance is the perfect tool. Everywhere you are told and every practice tells you, accept yourself. And I always ask myself a question, what kind of me should I accept? Whom to accept? What to accept? I'm ready. Accept yourself. Well, here I am. I accepted myself. I have knees, pants, nipples, elbows. Accepting that she is not pretty. She couldn't even remember that it happened. Didn't you see how difficult it was to remember? There was nothing there. No one said anything because it was scary. She simply realized it. Oh, simply realized it. I love it when you use the word simply. Just like that. Everything is simple. Everything and everything and everything. Okay, now. Come here. Come on. Come on. I'm simply interested. Of course you are. Stand here. I simply have the same problem. Simply, yes. I'm very strong and I cannot... Yes. Uh, by the way, do you want me to show you something else? While the rabbit is here. I'm kidding. Someone here today who told me downstairs earlier that he saw some kinesiology or psychokinesiology which I use? Already swallowing. Have a look. Shall we do something? Or shall we demonstrate it something? Are you in a relationship? I got divorced. And she's nodding. Look, I got divorced and the smile appears immediately. See, she loved it. Evolved in something right away. Yeah, okay. So now I'll go over there. Now can you walk in that direction and return? The way you feel now and here. A divorcee. Look at her. A little divorcee. Walk, walk, just keep on walking. And now come back. What is she like, guys? I would say heavy. Literally heavy. Okay, it's just about the state. Come on, now you have lots of money and a new husband, a great one. Walk that way. Go. Come on, come on, and now come back. Interesting, isn't it? She has sped up a bit, but the heaviness remains. I think it has even intensified. Are you left-handed or right-handed? Left-handed. Left-handed? Look, the left shoulder or shoulder blade is responsive for conflicts with the partner. Left side for left-handed people. In case of right-handedness, right side. I'm a bad partner. Actually, it explains why she became even heavier on this side when I told her you have a new relationship. It seemed that she walked faster, but the walk became heavier. Why are you such a bad partner? I don't understand. Well... And she's nodding. Who sees that? She says, well, and the body starts nodding right away. She has this conflict. For me, as a specialist, finding is no longer a problem. Well, I just know the localization. What is it? How do you live with all this? It's hard. Yes, and the mucous membrane thickens, right? It began after that and doesn't go away. Yes, but what happened there? There, there, stop. What did you see there now? That one, stop. For some reason, I'm an adult there, but I saw some children. What children? What kind of children are there? I don't know. What happened there? Unrealized children didn't happen. Unrealized. Now, listen, and when you are unrealized, what are you like? Describe in one word. Well, worthless. And when you're worthless, what are you like? Unwanted. And when you are unwanted, what are you like? Another word. And when you are unwanted, what are you like? 
Well, as if a weakness. Weak. And when you are weak, what are you like? As if a uh, lifeless. Yes. And when you are lifeless, what are you like? Will you allow yourself to be dead for a minute? Just one minute. Come on, die for a minute. And she inhaled. She has allowed. I thought that we would find not pretty, but she has something else. Why face in particular? Face? Yes, what comes to your mind? Come on. Any words? Mm, there was a betrayal. A betrayal. And when? For me, beauty is important. Still have to work through. Do you hear her voice trembling? They always say that I'm beautiful, sexy and so on, but I need to hear about the soul. I want them to acknowledge not only the appearance, but also what's inside. Yes, when they value only the appearance, disregarding your soul, what are you like, in one word? Well, I don't know. The rapper is not interesting to me. What are you like when they only value the rapper? Underestimated? Yes, but she is smiling when she says underestimated. When a person is smiling, it means that the body needs this particular experience. And when they say, you know, everything is so terrible in my life, you have such friends, don't you? So why are you smiling then? And his reply is, well, this is a defensive reaction. This is not a defensive reaction. The body discharges a little. It feels normal for the body because there's nothing unnecessary for the body. Everything that happens is necessary for evolution. Moreover, it's necessary for the internal, universal, human evolution. Look, now I am you. I am you. But I'm valued for my inner world and for my appearance too. I am you and I'm appreciated for everything. I am valued. I'm coming to you and I'll become you. I'm scared for some reason. Well, look, she's scared. Well, do you understand? She wants to be like that, but the body doesn't let her go there. If we start to dig in this whole topic, we'll find out that something had happened. Maybe somewhere somebody's inner world was evaluated and as a result, something terrible happened and the body recorded that it's prohibited to go there. Perhaps it comes from her mother, perhaps it's hers. We just don't have much time for this now. Everything is tied to something. So I am you and I'm acknowledged. How does it feel here? It hurts. Yes. How old are you now? Just listen. 30. 30. Now come on, you are you and you are 30. 29, 28, 26, 20. Does it hurt? It disappeared and then it began to hurt again. 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. Better already. Yep, and I got goosebumps. Well, does it hurt now, even a little? Yes, a little bit. All right, 11, 10, 9, 8. Oh, 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 oh. It rises up. Yes, I can see you're already shaking. And now you're 6, 5. Well, it comes and goes for some reason. Well, now you are 4 years old. Right here. What's there? Well, it's hard to breathe. You're 3. M more peaceful? Yes, and now you're 4. Three, two, one. Just don't fall. You're one month old. You're one day old and you were just born. How it is in your chest? Well, I still feel it. Yes, and now you are in your mom's belly and you're five months old. You are in your mom's belly and you are one month old. And now you are in your mom's belly and you're one day old. You were just conceived and no one knows about you yet. It rose up here. Yes, and now you are your mother a month before pregnancy. You are your mother and you are 15 years old. You are your mother and you are one year old. All right, okay. And now you are in your mom's belly and you are one day old and you were just conceived. And I, Anton Antonov, appear then and there before you and inform you that you'll soon appear in the womb of one charming lady and something will be happening with her. You won't take these feelings from her, you'll leave them to her. And I also tell you that to be underestimated means to be happy. And if you're not acknowledged, then there will be lots and lots and absolute lots of money. Yes, there will be very beautiful kids. And in general, everything will be cool. And I also tell you that I've seen you when you're 35 and you have absolutely everything, everything that you wished for. I love you already. Yes, and with this knowledge, you are here and now. 
You are here and now. And now I am you and I'm acknowledged. I'm coming to you. There is no fear. There is no fear and her mouth is open. She is relaxed. Let's applaud her. Listen, you're very cool. Well done. Give me a hug. Thank you. But you understand, don't you? I am underestimated and I'm losing my face. I didn't find it now. I wanted to show you that this specifically. But the point is, I am underestimated and I'm losing my face. There was some kind of a situation where this feeling disappeared and she spoke less. Somewhere she was stressed because I'm not valued, I'm not good enough, I'm underestimated. But the body perceives everything literally, it perceives as it's losing face. Who has pimples on their back? What's behind your back there? Some kind of feeling that something is told in your back. Or something is said behind your back? Maybe it happens always, the body protects the back and there's a feeling that something is said behind your back or in the back. Sometimes it's really happening, but sometimes you're just afraid that something is going on there. And what does your body do? It thickens the dermis on the back. You have inflammation. I said it earlier that there were several women at the seminars who had affairs in workplaces. It was three of them, or four already? No, three. They all had a feeling that they were talking about it in the office behind their backs that she's seeing someone there. And what to do? Say yes to that. Say yes, I am seeing someone. Go to the office, climb on a table and say yes, I am seeing someone. What to do with the fact that you care about what others are saying? Sleep with your husband. Yes, well, I'm kidding. That is, we always need to accept this and say yes. Yes, if you're aware of it, now how could she realize it? Who was asking about this? So, you were asking about realizing. How would you realize all this now? Well, by yourself. I mean, how would you realize it? I just know this is impossible. How am I going to get this out of me? How can I find the whole strategy that my mom had? And accordingly, so did everyone else. Anton, why do you say that it's impossible by yourself? You can ask yourself such questions. Well, ask them then. Well, for example, what am I like? Well, same as you asked. Well, the brain will be distracted and the brain won't let you. The brain is deceiving. Deceiving? At my sessions, people sit down, but sometimes it happens and I have to hold them still. They begin to drink water, take a mug and do such kind of things. The body does everything to defend itself, retreat, to be distracted. And I can see it in the eyes that the person is listening and suddenly he is distracted. Huh? What? What were you saying? What? Perhaps my uniqueness is that I have internal aggression, and when I start using it, people immediately wake up and start listening to me. I used to think that it is my flaw, my aggression, straightforward, like this. But now I see that it really helps me during therapy sessions. Sometimes I really grab onto someone. I know that sometimes it might not look very considerate. In general, psychosomatics is not very considerate. Didn't you hear what kind of things I try to inculcate? There will be lots of money. But is there time to be sensitive when a person has a tumor? Who cares what I tell them? What difference does it make if the end result is that will remove the tumor? There are some guys who attended the seminars and they told me, you're not considerate, we don't want to listen to you. I said, listen, if you work with snots, then go on. I work with people with serious diseases very often. And the issue of being sensitive is no longer on the agenda. And if I don't know what else to do, I'll inculcate any kind of idea even of Armageddon, if that helps a person. Again, they instill this in us. We are all so strong and we can strongly influence something with our thoughts. But do not forget that they are also thoughts of other people. And how will you change anything there? All right. Measuring my pulse, I drank coffee. Mesoderm. Look, mesoderm. The new mesoderm layer. What it's about? Our parenchyma and musculoskeletal system, including our lymphatic system, were developed from there. And our bone marrow, of course. Who was that who asked about the bone marrow? I did. I have a nuance, though. You have a nuance. Do you have bone marrow? Yes, I do. Well, okay. Well, everyone has nuances, don't worry. So, with this tissue, we react to all conflicts which are called cell devaluation conflicts. And what does it mean? I'm not the way I should be. I'm doing something wrong, I'm just not good enough. I don't understand something and so on. That is, according to the localization, based on the area it happens, we can identify in what context a person devalues himself. 
Who has some pain related to the musculoskeletal system? Migraine. A migraine is already a healing phase, the frontal fear. That is what it's all about. Migraine refers to this. Or to the frontal fear. Fear is right in front of me. And what part of your head you've got pain? In the back? Well, here. I don't know where. Frontal fear. Now, I won't tell you what exactly because it's necessary to dig into it. But when it hurts in the back of the head, then it's frontal fear. Danger is in front of me. Think about what you can react to like that. You saw something now. The image that flashed through your mind. This is what you have to dig. And look, she inhaled immediately and she relaxed. God, I love these quick therapies. What hurts? The neck is uh, lower where the shoulder blades are a little higher. Yes, in short, that's the cervical spine. Intellectual self-devaluation. The skull bones, shoulders and neck refer to intellectual self-devaluation. Why do young people often have neck pain nowadays? Of course, if before I used to compare myself only with co-workers, now I open Instagram and everyone is so successful there. Everybody has lots of money. I don't know whether it's credit or borrowed. I know nothing about it. And they keep on telling me I'm cool, I earn money and come with me. But I can't follow them because my body is not designed for it. It's not cut out for that. And I start devaluing myself. Damn, I'm not like that. I can't build into an LL structure, build a whole bunch, referral system. I, I, I just can't fix it. I'm a fool. And it begins to hit in the neck. Intellectual self-devaluation. It applies to everything in general. I am bad-mannered, I am uneducated, I am not smart enough, I'm not erudite enough, and so on. All kinds of situations. It's just this tissue has one characteristic. It's highly accumulative. All right, I need to slow down a little, otherwise I won't catch my breath. It's accumulative. That is, in these small situations, ulceration increases here. So what happens in the conflict active phase? Ulceration. There is ulceration in the cartilage in joints. As a result of slight self-devaluation, cartilage in joints ulcerate. In the healing phase, swelling occurs there, because everything in the body is healed by swelling or inflammation. Right, now I'll breathe a little more because I've had a coffee. My heart is pounding. And what about external injuries? I recently burned my ankle against a bike. It's not from the inside, it's external. Did I try to solve myself down somehow or what? an ankle against a bike. If it happened once, well, I can't tell you here what kind of a tension you have there, but almost all injuries occur in that part of the body where you have tension. That is, the part which the body does not feel, because in the cold phase we don't feel anything. In the stress phase the ulceration doesn't hurt. If I, for instance, devalue myself in the sense that I cannot go somewhere, I want to go, but I cannot, then the active phase occurs in my legs. And I have mild numbness there, but I don't even feel that. This is devaluation. And if the joints hurt, joints. If it's knees, then it's a conflict of not being sporty. I'm not athletic enough or something. I'm just not athletic enough at all. I recently had a session with a girl. She is an athlete. And of course she has this thing that we are not good enough and this and that. But earlier there was not enough intensity for her to feel the symptoms already. Then she grows up, she needs to get married and she feels that she can't keep up. Well, she's not getting married. Goes on a date with one man and then another one. And what do her parents say? Come on, hurry up. Come on and hurry up. The feeling of not being sports enough is increasing here. I'm not catching up. I'm not good enough to make it. And this is called a conflict of not being sporty. The pain in the musculoskeletal system indicates a conflict active phase. The musculoskeletal system hurts in the active phase if you are currently in this situation, as we have now removed this in case of Regina. It means that she was under the stress at this given moment. We remove the stress and the pain goes away. And arthrosis. 
Same. Everything refers to self-devaluation. If, for example, you remembered that during your life you had some kind of injuries, some kind of inflammation, and they have passed and have not bothered you anymore for many years, does it mean that you... You have grown, you have evolved just inside. That's why all the diseases are given to us. All kinds of practices tell us this happens for you to grow. In fact, this is very true. But we, as biologists, know that this is for evolution, for both, for the physiological and for mental. That doesn't mean that some kind of energy has grown inside of you. You yourself have realized what you did wrong, figuratively speaking, or the body has realized that some things are no longer needed for the current conditions. It does not need the self-devaluation in order to avoid some kind of a danger. We get something. Because of our illness, we always get something. And this is called a secondary gain. So, the self-devaluation, which is not strong enough, will hit the lymphatic system. A lymph node will come out of the body part. Stronger self-devaluation will affect the cartilage and joints. Bones become brittle. And in the active phase, they ulcerate. That's why fractures happen. Everything seemed to be fine. One minute I was walking and then I stumbled and my leg broke. Why? Because there was ulceration already in progress. And why do old people have brittle bones? Why do old people have very strong pain in the musculoskeletal system? Of course, I'm already old, I can't do anything. I can't have any influence on the government, on the city council, on the neighbors or anything else. I'm old and I devalue myself. Again, we are looking at localization. For example, if the femur... Now, I can't endure it, I can't handle it and I can't bear it. Hip joints, I cannot control something or someone spine and the lumbar area, a generalized self-devaluation, cervical spine, an intellectual self-devaluation, hands. Well, this is very simple. Look at the function. I can't hold something. I can't grab something. And when you talk to a person in this context, you'll find out what is wrong, in what way he devalues himself, what cannot he hold on to. Maybe it's his children, his pension, maybe something else. I don't know. It can be really anything. Hair loss and low ferritin. Iron deficiency, anemia. Self-devaluation related to the family clan. Something is happening in family relationships. Well, for instance, my mother doesn't love me, my mother betrays me, and so on. Again, this is from my experience, but the theory also tells about it. Self-devaluation related to the family clan. Hair loss. Why did we need hair in nature? to attract the opposite sex. And if I cannot attract anyone, then I'm not sexy. Nature does not really need me. That is, the function is not executed and it's not needed. It starts to go away. There are specific situations in which you have felt that you were abandoned, someone else was chosen over you, and so on. Hair starts to fall out. I've had many clients with hair loss problems. And by the way, there were different cases as well, because I was digging into them a lot. This is self-devaluation, but it is healing already. Blood vessels also suffer from self-devaluation. It turns out that cholesterol heals the blood vessels. It's just the medicine tells us something else. But if you are in relapses, you go up and down, it is produced here in order to heal, and you're back in the active phase and it remains. The thing is that our body is not adapted to ongoing situation and it tries to adapt. Imagine we have lived in the wild for 400 million years and somehow we managed to solve any kind of stressful situations. And now we aren't able to solve them here because we can't quit the job and we can't leave our husband. If an animal, a monkey, does not like this male, she goes on to another. We can't do this, can we? In our cases, marriages are made in the sky, aren't they? I'm all about the bone marrow again. Bone marrow. This is the situation of the most severe self-devaluation. Generalized, the most severe, it hits the bone marrow, leukemia or blood cancer. Yes, blood cancer. The most severe self-devaluation. I can't do anything at all. I'm just not worthy. And the bone marrow edema. Edema, this is the healing phase. It's just that when relapses have already begun, edema remains and an active phase happens again. In our body, everything is healing with swelling and inflammation. I know, I already remember that. Yes, more questions?
If, let's say, there is a perfect situation that will defeat all diseases, on the contrary, this is utopia, isn't it? To aspire to this. Well, there will be no utopia, that's why it's called utopia, because it won't happen. Well then, how can we use everything you're saying here? You cannot. Well, stress is useful for us. I mean, maybe there is no need to resolve it. For you, yes, you won't be able to use everything. What will you do then? There is no way to use all of this. This is all utopia. What then? What is it for you if this cannot be used? What is this for you? Absence of self-development. Mm-hmm. Where else are you not improving yourself? Well, I'm doing it a lot. A lot? Improving myself. Improving yourself. Why are you doing that? Well, probably this is also a moment of self-devaluation. Self-devaluation. Withdrawal. I hear it in your questions. I'm not sure if others hear it as well. But that's why I'm asking you this. What then? And you reply, develop myself further. Do you hear it yourself? If there is nothing here, I need to move on. You are escaping danger. Carrot dangling in front or carrots in the back. Do you understand? Either they beat me from behind so that I run away or something in front of me and I go after it. Well, everyone has their own strategy. Realize, by the way, what your strategy is. That is, what is the reason for your personal development? You do it because things are bad or because things are good? We do something out of good state, very rarely. That is, this good state is activated as a result of bad experience. What about lymphostasis, for example, on the left leg? My mom has it. Self-devaluation. Either I cannot go where I want to go, or I go where I don't want to be. But the left leg is tied to her mother. It means that there are some situations, I mean inculcations, instilled by her mother. You must or you mustn't. And accordingly, now it's manifested as I can or I cannot. Always look at the function of an organ. Hands and legs are always the simplest things to realize. Mild muscle spasm between the left shoulder blade and spine. Spasm. For the left-handed people, yes, accordingly, the other way around. I'm a bad son or I'm a bad father or I'm a bad mother. It's simple. If there's a mild spasm, then it's still not so bad. Now, the intensity. As you age, you'll start to wind yourself up even more and the intensity will increase. Why do they say that after 30 years old, all the diseases crawl out? Because we begin to become more conscious. We start to realize everything that happened and everything that we did, but we don't do anything about it. Well, why do we need a psychologist? We're cool anyway. I know everything about myself. What do I need a psychologist for? Most of you think this way, don't you? A psychologist? This is not a doctor. A psychologist? This is about something else. This is about self-development. Being overweight, is this also psychosomatics? Yes, this is the second tissue. The body protects itself. This also refers to the dermis. The body is defending itself. If I am bigger, I am safer. Why do men have a belly fat? Well, if he's a businessman, he wants to accumulate something. Therefore, his belly grows like that. Is this a healing phase? Healing is when the fat begins to go away. The fat breakdown happens. And if according to medical indicators, I'm healthy now... Yes, but your voice is trembling. Uh, there were two serious situations. Well, we can see, yes. We can see the fear of tumor. Well, it's possible to resolve this situation, isn't it? It's not only possible, but it's also necessary. Resolve it by all means. You can hear how your voice is trembling. Now, first of all, you have a fear of oncology. Today, I'll try to remove the fear of oncology from everyone, okay? Because we always remove it. If I work with the clients with an oncology diagnosis, I always remove the fear of chemotherapy. Fear of illness, fear of the future. There is everything, absolutely everything. Can I have more water, please? Yeah, thank you. There was a question about cholesterol. What about low level of cholesterol? An active phase. Low level means there's active phase. In fact, there are not just two phases, but actually five. I just don't tell you about them all, or otherwise you just get confused. There is also a scarification phase. Cholesterol can be lowered in that phase. You don't need this. If it happens to you, for example, if you checked it twice a year and there was some kind of a situation, it means that it works like that in your head. What's the use of checking cholesterol if you saw that it was the same level a year ago as it is now? So you're still in it. It's simple. How much do parents influence the physical code after the birth that a person transmits? 
We all constantly influence each other. Everything affects everyone. If, well, how do you feel now? Excited. Yes, and if you could assess your state on the 10-point rating scale, where the 10 is really great and 0 is sadness and misery, how would you grade yourself? 6. Yes, and now look, mom is sitting next to you, mom is near, just feel it, just, just feel it, is the state changing? Probably yes. How many points now? 3. Well, do you need any further explanation? Is her generic code influenced by her mother? This is a healthy state, for example. What is health in general? What are you talking about? Well, look, you said that when a person gets old, his bones become brittle. He says, I'm old. If you are near him, does it affect you or not? Well, if you have the same strategy, if it's a relative, then most likely you will have the same strategy. But again, we can get a strategy from the mother, but not from a father for some reason. Or the other way around. Part of it from mom and another part from dad. If it triggers uncomfortable feelings in you, then it affects you. If you feel easy and cool, it's just nothing. Look, figuratively speaking, you can divide families into happy and unhappy. Most families are unhappy. I mean, they don't know what happiness is. In the Soviet Union, nobody taught us about happiness. They taught, go to work, go to do something for the motherland. And before that, life was even more difficult, even more stressful. There was less stress in terms of quantity, but it was more severe and intense because it was easier to die as a result of hunger, of war or anything else. Who cared about happiness? In those times, the definition of happiness was if you are dressed, if you have your shoes on, if you had a place to live, you were happy. Where did we get this from? We got that from those times because that's what happiness was for them. Those people had different needs and requests. Their basic needs was home and food. Now our requests are like, let's self-actualize, let's make money. And accordingly, our stresses get fragmented, but in terms of quantity, there are more of them. They're less intense, but their number is increased. That's why they say that there are more diseases. Of course, there will be more of them because the stresses are fragmented. Another question. Over there, in the back, someone raised a hand. Yes, yes, you, Snow White. If all illnesses come from devaluation... Not all illnesses come from devaluation. Well, you mentioned a lot. Muscular skeletal system, lymph, bones. Pain in the head, for example. Not in the head, in the neck. We're now talking about one tissue. We're talking about one tissue. Self-devaluation. This relates to the new mesoderm layer. Well, yes, and what is the question? If this is such a global problem, what to do with it? Yes, it happens everywhere around the world. You hear it everywhere, you constantly compare yourself with someone. We were taught to compare, because we are taught to be the best. And how will I become the best? This can be achieved only if someone else is worse, right? And how else will I know that I'm the best? On a desert island, I am the best, right? Or not? You go to a psychologist. Get rid of this thing completely. Why would I compare myself with anyone? I don't need to compare myself with anyone. I am self-sufficient. Yes, I am like this. Yes, I'm not good at this or that. Yes, okay, that's the way I am. I'm just saying yes to all of this. Of course, this is not done as easily or simply as I'm telling you now, because it's not easy to realize. Most of your reactions, and this is what we began the seminar with, are automatic. Our thoughts are automatic. Your thoughts are automatically triggered by feelings, and you won't even be able to realize them. Teach yourself to be aware in the moment. First of all, the instrument of breathing. Observe whenever you're not breathing. Right now, half of the audience is not breathing here. Although you're more relaxed and you've begun to breathe deeper, breathe. And you'll begin to be more aware, to be more in the moment. When you don't breathe, you feel stressed. But there is one process that we can control in our body, and that's breathing. So, control it. Catch yourself in the moments where you don't breathe, and start breathing. And you'll start realizing what you're thinking about, because you are explaining to the body, I am not scared. And if I'm breathing, it means that there is no danger, and your conscious thinking will be switched back on. Unconscious thinking, it is automatic. Automatic process is stress. Just everything just goes in a circle. Okay, so the fourth tissue, the ectoderm. 
well, it's not the fourth, actually, it's the third one, excuse me. It's just that in psychosomatics, it's the fourth one, because we divide the mesoderm in two groups. This refers to all territorial conflicts. What do I perceive as my territory? This is me in the first place. It is my territory. For a woman, it's her children and her man. And for a man, it's his company, business, and maybe his living place and his woman. Because it is designed that way by nature. Because the males of our species are territorial. We need our territory. We need to feel that we have our territory. Because our females, dare I say so, biologically carry children in our territory. That's why girls say, if he has no apartment, I won't marry him. Because it's not that the girl is materialistic, it's rather a generic code, she has to produce offspring. Yes, a girl is looking for safety for her offspring. Safety. So, can you really blame women for that she's looking for something? Yes, of course, she does the right thing. What else does she have to do? The offspring must be safe. Territorial conflicts include a lot of things. For example, a man was stolen away from a woman, and for her, her man is her territory. If a man is stolen away, a woman may react with a territorial conflict. But territorial conflicts also include different kinds of everyday situations. For example, students settled in a dorm and suddenly all of them start to have gastritis. Have you heard of this? When students have gastritis. No, it's not about the food, guys. Nutrition is only a secondary factor. If I eat rubbish food only, well, obviously I do it because I have some kind of a situation in my head, I cannot realize that I shouldn't eat fast food. But this is not the primary reason. The primary reason is a state of mind in which I eat unhealthy food. The stomach reacts to territorial conflicts with ulceration, and the tissue is ulcerated. Everything related to this tissue ulcerates in the active phase. What's happening? Let's transfer this function into nature. I'm on my territory, there is an enemy, and we're having a fight now. I have something in my stomach, and it's difficult to fight with a full stomach. The body increases the acidity to digest everything to be able to engage in a battle without the heaviness in the stomach. And what happens with students when they start to share a room in one dorm? Yes, they're stressed out because of common territory. This guy is a complete moron, this one is smelly, and this one is a total freak, and he talks in a strange way. A person starts to feel very stressed, and the body is constantly preparing for a battle. They're bothering me, and this is my territory. Constantly. The ulceration of stomach lining begins. And due to conflict relapses, gastritis is diagnosed, which will turn into an ulcer later. It happens because of the constant conflict relapses. Another example. The enemy is on my territory and the battle is about to begin. But I have no strategy from my parents to react with my stomach. I have a strategy to react with lungs. The ulceration happens in the bronchi. In order to increase the airflow in the lungs, so that I can breathe during a battle, the ulceration occurs in the lungs. The enemy draws back, retreats, metaphorically speaking, and the body enters the healing phase. How does everything heal in our body? By swelling and inflammation. What happens to the bronchi? Well, the bronchi are swollen. We begin to feel suffocation. This is asthma or a cough. Who asked about coughing? Here you are. You always analyzed who you talked to or came in contact with before coughing. I asked about the child. And for myself as well. I just have it for short periods, nothing gets inflamed, it doesn't hurt, I just cough and that's it. It's just not clear what the cause is. Well, this needs to be worked through. I can't tell it from here, no such thing is coming to my mind so that you'd say, wow, right, okay, cool. The cause could be lungs, because the same endoderm processes take place there. And during the healing phase, there are waste products as well. If the intensity is not so high, the body needs to get rid of them somehow. Another reason could be larynx. The inflammation occurs during a healing phase and waste products from bacteria remain in the body and it has to get rid of it. The body throws it out one way or the other. In general, there are four reasons for coughing. It's just that more often we find that bronchi cause it. Most often we find out that we come across with a husband or mother in the kitchen on a regular basis and that's where arguments usually happen. And in child's case, the root cause in parents 
Well, theoretically, everything comes from parents, and if an older child has it, then he has just inherited this strategy. He met a lion for the first time. If he doesn't meet a lion, the strategy or the gene remains asleep. It's just my child is constantly coughing. Moreover, this is not kind of cough that comes from inside, as if external, a dry cough. We are fighting with him. More questions? You laughed. You answered and laughed. The body realized itself and laughed. Do you have any more questions? Well, keep fighting. You can intensify this war and see if the cough gets worse or not. Should I talk with the child or look for a reason inside of me? Listen, of course, with a child. Always look for a reason outside. Why should you search for it inside yourself? He also has some kind of specific perception. Of course, but who does he get this all from? All of these reactions, I mean. A predisposition to these reactions. If you fight with him, he fights back. Did he learn this himself or what? I mean, to fight against something. Did he hook it up from somewhere in a space? Of course, from you or from his father. I can see that you're saying everything is fine here. The main thing is all that is fine with them. You better deal with yourself. I'm perfect anyway. I'm perfect too. I just can't see it right through you. So what else is related to territorial conflicts? Are there people with cystitis here? Women with cystitis, I would say. Yes. I myself constantly used to have urethritis, and this is the same as cystitis for women. What? No one else has cystitis? I had it once, a long time ago. The thing is, after four years... Now I think we're going to have the first case of non-psychosomatics, right? No, no, this is pure psychosomatics. It's typical. The question is, this cystitis is not due to inflammatory process of the bladder or urethra, but this cystitis is a result of pinched pelvic nerves. And who told you that? Just remember now, visualize this doctor. All doctors did. All doctors? Well then, visualize them and see in your imagination how you give this knowledge back to them. I'm seriously telling you this now. See how you give them this knowledge. Just do it. Now, do it. Okay, well done. And now you ask them, in your imagination, to give you something that is yours. Observe what they're giving to you. What are they giving? Cystitis. Well, take it. Take it. It's yours. Take it, it's totally yours. Guys, everything is knowledge. You are afraid of oncology because you have been told to do so. You have not come across it, maybe haven't even had it. Why are you afraid of this? This is some knowledge which you have been given from somewhere. Because there is no clinical evidence. This happens because you're constantly tested. When you were in the healing process or in an active phase, the ulceration was in progress, which they did not see. Maybe you're constantly in low-intensity active phase, and then you have a symptom during the healing phase. I've had symptoms for four years in a row every day. Moreover, you are in conflict relapses. Well, if you go and check and you don't have any symptoms, this is the active phase. And they don't see it, this ulceration. They wouldn't get into your bladder in first place. What's the essence of medicine? Now we'll talk about brain cancer and I'll explain why they cannot diagnose it normally. Because they don't dig into the head. They do MRI scanning and you receive a contrast solution and they observe certain parts where it is accumulated. They don't dig into the head. So, cystitis. Why do we need a bladder in nature? For what? Come here, honey. You're sitting there and crying. Why do we need a bladder in nature? What do animals do with urine, guys? Exactly, they mark their territory. Cystitis, this is a territorial conflict. It's a territorial conflict associated with close relatives or friends. That is, when someone intrudes on my territory and that's not an enemy, that's someone from my close people. During an active phase, the body begins to ulcerate a bladder because you're stressed here without realizing it. The bladder begins to ulcerate in order to increase its volume to excrete more urine to mark your territory so that a person would get lost, roughly speaking. A girl calls me while I'm on my way to Moscow and says, Guru, I have cystitis, what's going on? A metaphorical example comes to my mind and I say, let's say your mother arrived, for instance, and starts it and she interrupts me. Stop, stop, stop. My mother arrived and she begins to tell me how her mother is going through her stuff. A mother visited her daughter and started snooping to find out what she has there and so on. As a result, a daughter feels stressed out. The ulceration begins, mom leaves or daughter goes to the office, a healing phase, 
all the symptoms, all the pain, because there is a swelling of ulcerated walls. Urethritis is almost the same, but it happens in the urethra. The urethra expands due to ulceration and that you can extrude urine more quickly and mark your territory. Because in a woman's case, her territory is here, and for a man, it can be a bunch of things, and he needs to excrete more quickly. The body has a logic and biological meaning of each disease. That's why I say that psychosomatics found on the internet does not give answers. You're asking yourself what, and you find some answer. You ask for what, so that your soul, la 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 la. There's no answer why. Why? Because the biology is unknown. We answer all these questions. And what about thrush? Thrush is a conflict of unpleasant contact, sexual conflict, either with some partner or it can also happen that you went to some procedure, the doctor was unpleasant and you thought that medical tools were dirty and it will also begin. In general, many people are susceptible to this because we all have sex and we all can experience stress during the intercourse because of the smell of the partner. Some time ago when you were young, for example, either this or that is just not entirely right. The body feels stressed and then every time sex happens, everything that reminds of that partner starts to activate this. There was a girl here in Bali who had a persistent thrush. We worked with her one session, two sessions, and it seemed to disappear, but then recurred again. And she said to me, well, I've noticed that it starts when I drink alcohol, and secondly, when I put on beige underwear. And we began to dig in it and found out that in her childhood, her grandmother had beige panties and she used to wear them as a child and everything was great. But then she saw these panties quite dirty, well, in a certain way. What was instilled in her? She was immediately disgusted and unpleasant contact conflict, and now it constantly recurs when she wears beige, a track, a reminder. We usually do not colorate, we just put on something and we wear it. We're not taught to pay attention to what is happening around us. Why are you like this? Why are you so messed up? Why have you turned your back on the people? What's the matter with you? I don't know. Where are the sensations in the body? Why do you need it? I just sit and listen to others and there are so many things I respond to. When this girl, you're the beauty by the way, was here, I reacted strongly. Yes, and what if I take this feeling from you for one minute? Will you give it to me? Sure. Just for one minute, just one. Is it still there now or is it not? It is. Well, give it to me for a minute. Just for one minute, I'll take it. Give it. Just one minute. Give it. Give it. Give it to me. How does it feel there? A little better. Give it again. More. More. Yes, and now be quiet. Now be quiet. What thoughts are there? Your thoughts. What I just flashed for your mind? A person. You may not say it aloud, just realize it. See any situation now. I see myself for some reason. Where do you see yourself? Where do you see yourself? Well, of course, the symptom is needed. The body rejoices when the symptom is returned. We need all symptoms for protection. Have you already realized it? That's why it's so difficult when I say, I am you, I am acknowledged and coming to you, but the body is scared. Whoever attended my sessions, I often do this. I say, I am you and I am happy and I'm coming to you. And I see that everybody's muscles tense up because it is scary to be happy. Mom and dad taught us so and so on, or I was happy and then something happened. Where did you see yourself now? Where were you? Stop, stop. What's that? At home. Where is it, this home? Previous home in Nizhny Novgorod. And what happened there? Do you hear the voice? Be a little patient, sunshine. I'm going to fall now. What happened there? I'll hold you. And you've seen, yes, I sometimes put my hand behind the back. I'm often asked, are you checking for energy or something? You better check out the video where a girl collapsed there. Well, nearly collapsed. During a seminar, I managed to catch her. Well, I'm stronger and I begin to push. Be patient. I'm doing this on purpose and you'll start to remember now. I am stronger and I will begin to push. And the body chooses which reaction? The reaction to fear is divided into fight, run away or play dead. You cannot fight with me, you cannot run away and just bam, passes out. I often do this. Sometimes such an exorcism takes place during my sessions, guys. I was already going to call an ambulance one time. It's very interesting. So, what happened just there? Well, that very thing. Relationship. 
Well, it's clear that it was a relationship. Well, nothing. Indifference. The man doesn't love. Yes, and what are you like when a man is indifferent towards you? Not interesting. And will you allow yourself to be uninteresting for a minute? Yes. Go on. Come on, say it. I'm uninteresting. I'm uninteresting. And how old are you now? 29. Yes, now you are you and you listen to the voice. You are 28. Say, I'm uninteresting. I'm uninteresting. You are 25. Say it. I'm uninteresting. 20. I'm uninteresting. 15. I'm uninteresting. 16. I'm uninteresting. 17. I'm uninteresting. 18. I'm uninteresting. Yes, sunshine, what happened there? Quiet. What happened there at the age of 17? When you decided that it is safer to be uninteresting? Just any memory, any picture. Let's say this way, I didn't want anyone to know about something. Is that why you became uninteresting? In order to hide something? Uninteresting and unnoticeable. Well, she's deceiving even me now. Yes. Come on, now, now you are you and you are 15 years old. You are you and you are 7 years old. Five, one, say I'm uninteresting. I'm uninteresting. Yes, and I, Anton Antonov, appear then and there in front of you, and I inform you, the uninteresting people are the richest and the happiest. Also, if you are uninteresting, that you'll have a lot of kids. Because she's reacting to I'm not interesting, it hits her there. I'm uninteresting for a man, and I cannot be with him. Accordingly, I will not reproduce, and so on. Mm. Mm. And now you are here. Say I'm uninteresting. I'm uninteresting. How do you feel? Well, it's not in the stomach anymore. It somehow went away after this phrase. Is there anything else that needs to be done? Well, if there is, what is it? Nothing. Well, if there is anything else that needs to be done, what's the answer? Yes or no? Yes. What is it? I want to be interesting for myself. And what happens if you are interesting? I will feel good. And what happens if you feel good? I'll be happy. What happens if you're happy? I'll be self-sufficient. And what happens if you're self-sufficient? I'll be independent. And what happens if you're independent? I'll be free. And what happens if you're free? I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. And what happens if you're happy? That's all. What's all? I don't know. I'll be happy. I'll be strong. There. I'll be strong. Yes, and the emotion appears immediately. Strong. Strong, you understand, right? Person has a connection, a link. If I'm happy, then I'm strong. And it is remembered from somewhere. But the body may not actually be strong. It doesn't feel the strength. Will it go into happiness? Well, how can it go there if it cannot handle it? If it's not strong? Now, say it. I'm strong. I'm strong. Say, I'm happy. I'm happy. And now say, I'm unhappy. I'm unhappy. And now say it again. I'm strong. I'm strong. I am unhappy. I am unhappy. I am unhappy. I am unhappy. Yes, and now your mother is next to you. Mom is standing next to you. Say, I'm unhappy. I'm unhappy. Give this unhappiness to your mother. Just visualize how you give this unhappiness in your imagination. It belongs to her. I don't want this. Well, it's quite obvious. Can two unhappy people make each other happy? No. Will you give unhappiness to your mother? Yes. Well, do it then. I did. No, you didn't. Will you give this unhappiness to your mom? Here, I am your mother. Please forgive me that I am unhappy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I'm like this. I haven't chosen this myself. Forgive me for what I'm like this. Forgive everything that I've done the way I've done. I'm sorry that everything turned out this way. I couldn't be different. I'm sorry. I am very sorry. I love you the way I can. Let my love be an experience. I don't know any other way. My parents told me so. Please forgive me. How does it feel? How does it feel now? Well, I feel better. As if something is even being taken away. Of course it is being taken away. The whole life strategy, I am unhappy. It's obvious. Now, it will be necessary either to become happy or fall back there again and enjoy being there. Everything is familiar there. Later I'll explain why it is so difficult to admit and get rid of these, as what they're called now, generic programs. 
Yes, we can call it survival strategy, survival response. So, how does it feel now? Better. Is there anything else? Well, you have an appointment with me. Will you come? Of course. Yes, come on. Let's applaud her, please. She feels better. What else relates to territorial conflicts? Let's go over it briefly. I'll tell you about metastases, about lung tumor, and there was something else, right? I'll tell you. I'll show you an example about money and how it works. For instance, why can't we make money or why can't we meet a man of some sort? Those of you who have already attended some seminars, they already... Uh, what is it? You retreated immediately. Bam! And twitched. Come, come here with... Come here to me. No need. Come on, come on. Well, it's quite obvious, okay? She's walking around with a tortured face saying, Choose me, choose me, some handsome, good-looking man. Well, look at you. You look great. You look great, don't you? Yes. Yes. And why so insecure? I'm just shy. It is obvious also. What are you shy about? The audience? Yes, and how do you feel it that you're shy? Well, I blushed. Yes, yes, turn this way and just feel it in your chest. And now, let's ask the body at what age it first appeared. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Somewhere in the kindergarten. Yes, and what happened there? Come on, just see the kindergarten. What happened there, kiddo? Well, I don't remember. Well, come on, just see the kindergarten. What's there? What do you see? I don't know. Nothing. Nothing there? And what do you see from kindergarten? Well, just some kind of performance. Yes, and what's going on there? Are you performing? No, I'm just sitting. And how do you feel there? As usual. As usual. How is it? It feels same as now? Well, no. Are you shy there or not? How does it feel now? Is it still in your chest or not? Are you still shy or not? Shy of what? Of them. Yes, I am shy. Come on now. You are you but the day before that performance. Are you shy? Yes. You are you but a month before that performance. Are you shy then? How should I imagine that? Are there any sensations right there in your chest or not? No. And I, Anton Antonov, appear then and there and I tell you, in a month you'll be at a kitten garden performance and you are allowed to be shy. All the shy people are the happiest and their men are the most handsome and richest. I'm telling you this a month before the performance and with this knowledge you find yourself there. Well, look, the eyes open there right away, look. Now you are now and here, how it is in your chest. That's it, she's no longer shy. Let's applaud her. I'm really telling you, methods of Psy 2.0 school, even though I don't have a relation to school anymore. I have nothing to do with Psy 2.0 school anymore, but these methods are fabulous. I can remove the shyness. This has already been done a hundred of times. When someone calls me before some events and says, listen, I'm in trouble. And after a minute, a person says, that's it. I'm going. I'm ready. I can do it. Do you understand? All that you're feeling now is also a reaction learned at some point. If you can remember it by yourself, where it happened, whether it was a kindergarten or anywhere else. It's just that the brain is deceiving us. It doesn't like that. Well, of course, it's desirable that someone is nearby who can point you to this, whether you're deceiving yourself in what moments or not. Now, oh, come on. Now, we talked about men. What's happening with men in your life? Nothing. They are absent. More precisely, I choose the wrong ones. Have a look. I chose the wrong ones. She's like this. I choose and she's proud of it. And why do you do it? Why do you need it? Come on, stand here. Why do you need it? Why do you need it? Yes, come on, describe her to me in one word. Lost. What else is she like? Another word. Victim? Victim, yes. Insecure? She's like a seeker. Well, I said it before and when I saw her and she was like, choose me, somebody please choose me. This vibration comes from a person. I am myself and I'm the most wounded. What is she like again? Who said what? Scared. Well, it's you sitting there scared. We got it. Well, come on, smile already. She doesn't believe in herself. You don't believe in yourself. Relax already. Well, of course, we always describe ourselves. It's understandable. But we're all universal. There are a bunch of things in all of us. And what she just said? She doesn't believe in herself. Well, that's normal. I also sometimes, well, actually quite often, from morning till night, doubt myself. But this is normal. You can't always be confident in yourself. 
Although I'm always confident nowadays, and I bit my lip and I lied to you again just there, okay? Do you understand? So what? What are you like? Describe yourself. Describe yourself in one word. What are you like? In one word? Insecure, I guess. Well, insecure. And in what age did it appear? I don't know. Yes, and now take a step back. Just step back. What kind of men do you choose? Womanizers. Okay, I'm a womanizer. I am a womanizer and I'm coming to you. Thomas laughing. I am a womanizer and I'm coming to you. How do you feel when I'm near you? And she's swallowing. How do you feel? Well, we see that she's not breathing, but she might say everything's fine. Of course, the body is used to living in this state. How do you feel? I'm not very comfortable. How do you feel it? Where is it in the body? And what are you like when you meet a womanizer? Let's do it again through acceptance. There are lots of tools, but I use whatever comes to my mind first. Yes, there are a bunch of tools. Will you give it to me for a minute? Will you? Just for a minute. I'll take it and we'll see how you feel without it. Come on, once again. What is it in your throat? Well, there is still something. Well, give me more. I'm taking it for one minute. This is yours. You need this for protection, I know. Give me. Just more. Yes, and how does it feel now? And what are you like now when this thing is here but you don't have it? What are you like? A word. That one. Come on. Confident. Confident. Will you allow yourself to be confident for one minute? Well, go on. For one minute. Yeah. One minute. And when you're confident, what are you like? Mmm, mm, that thing right there. What are you like? I don't know. It means you already allowed yourself. I'm putting this here. You'll pick it up when you leave. If anyone else needs it, there's a lot of it, by the way, in case someone needs insecurity. And I'm here, I am again, and I'm a womanizer, and I'm coming to you. How do you feel? Same. Same. Okay, well, that's a serious strategy. Some very serious strategy. And who was the most, most, most terrible womanizer that you've had? The most. Remember? Did you remember? You already twitched there. Who has flashed through your mind? Well, perhaps I remembered. Yes, and what happened with him there? Give me one situation which happened with him. I saw him with another girl. Yes, and how did you feel there? Bad. Come on, and now you are a minute before you saw him with that girl. Come on, and I, Anton Antonov, appear there and there in front of you, and I'll inform you that you'll see him in a minute with a girl. And with this knowledge, you find yourself in that situation where you see him with that girl, but you knew about that in advance. How do you feel? Okay. Okay, you are here. You are here and now. Is it clear? A whole life strategy. Most likely, mother used to meet womanizers and a grandmother had a few womanizers in her life also. That is, her body survives in automatic conditions in which her relatives survived. Why we don't like to be changed so much? Because we have been given automatic factory settings. To react to one thing this way, to react to another in a different way. And we are actually completely okay with it. We all say, why do I need a psychologist? I seem to be fine. Although we have all of this inside. But since we have factory settings, we don't know anything else. Therefore, the body doesn't want to change. It loves everything that is the least energy consuming. This is exactly as evolution has intended. All that consumes the least energy is being eliminated. Accordingly, why should I change if Armageddon has not begun yet? Therefore, the majority lives on these automatic settings inherited from parents. It is really instilled in you. I am a womanizer. I'm coming to you. How do you feel? How does it feel now? Well, that's all. That's it. Applaud her. What kind of man will you meet in the future? What comes to your mind first? Well, they're scary, yes, I completely understand. These men who are good men, they are scary. It's understandable. Come on, describe any of them. You knew only womanizers before. Whom will you meet now? Everything disappeared. Okay then, go and have some rest for a while. You can message me on Instagram later, just in case. 
I'll send you a video, this one which is about the subject. Let's applaud this girl again. That is, the body experienced uncomfortable states, but it has survived as a result. If an animal, a dog, experiences stress but survives, then this strategy is suitable for survival of species. What will happen then? The strategy is being passed on. And now she, a poor thing, doesn't understand why she meets only womanizers. It seems like she is choosing, but it turns out to be a womanizer. Ah, it's a miss again. She didn't miss it, she is looking for them with this feeling. We all meet as a result of our inner feelings, guys. Only then the thinking process begins. Well, he's handsome, and he's this and he's that, but you were caught by a feeling. Why do we like some people and dislike others? It seems to us that the reason is the appearance, but as soon as you remove these strategies from yourself, you level off, let's put it this way, the search zone is expanded. You begin to feel others as well. You're no longer focused on a single feeling which you used to search with. Do you get it? You just start to realize and ask yourself, what kind of people I like? What kind of people I fall for? Well, let's put it that way. Describe them in one word. Then say this word and observe what you feel in your body afterwards. You'll find a strategy. I realize strategy begins to reduce the intensity. So as soon as you become aware of what's happening... Earlier, downstairs, I was asked a question. Anton, suppose we change the reaction. Well, damn it, what if it doesn't go away? Well, of course, you need to retrain yourself. You just need to catch yourself in the moments where you experience the same emotion. When do I feel that I'm not pretty? When do I feel that I'm not pretty again? I know that this is difficult, but I'm laying this foundation in you, which is not done by anyone yet. There are gurus who understand all of this, but they sit in silence. I listened to one of them yesterday. He lives there and he says, I want to bring knowledge to this world, but I won't tell anyone. You can't take videos or photos. Everything is forbidden. What do you bring to this world then, damn it? I feel like cursing him. I really shouldn't be doing this. It simply means that's my symptom. We discussed the ectoderm briefly, right? I simply won't tell you about all organs and how they react, but you already know that there are territorial conflicts as well. I talked about the bronchi and the cystitis, about the main ones. Does herpes belong well, there? It's the unpleasant contact conflict. Look at the localization. It's either sexual or here on the lips. Either kissed someone or touched someone or did some other thing with someone. But I'll say that herpes is a very complicated thing. I was working through it with one person for three sessions and I was sweating literally, but I resolved it. What about prostatitis? Is it the same? Prostatitis? No. Prostatitis is related to the first tissue, morsel conflict. I don't feel like a man. I'm not man enough. What does a male need prostate for in nature? Well, everything is clear to find a female. There is a gland in the prostate, fluid is secreted and I smell attractive and females themselves begin to reach out to me. Accordingly, if there is not enough of them, I cannot find any female. What will body do as a result? Alright, here is a bigger prostate for you, secret more fluid, find yourself a female. It just worked this way in nature. It doesn't work now. What starts to happen? It's just one of my past conflicts. The fact that I open Instagram and social networks and I see these guys in their cars, my peers, but they all have this money and I don't have it. They have all the money and all the girls. And accordingly, one of the girls who I had a crush on was stolen away by one of these guys. And I was terribly stressed about this and this is how it all began. And since the age of 15, I had been living with constant prostatitis and when I visited a urologist, he said, your prostate is like that of a man of 60 years old. Well, how so? Well, he said, probably you often sit outside in a cold a lot. And I agreed. Well, probably. Treatment helped for six months or maybe for a year. And then again, everything used to come back and all the symptoms. And that's it. What about hemorrhoids? Well, hemorrhoids, there are two reasons. The first reason, this is a territorial conflict to mark the territory. The second one, and this refers to self-identification, I don't understand who I am and what I am. Any more questions? Uh, what about varicosis? Varicosis refers to self-devaluation. Who asked that? Me. I put on all the heavy burden. This is on my legs, I carry the burden. I put all the heavy burden and I cannot handle it. On the contrary, I consider myself irresponsible. Okay, we'll come here then. Shall we try to crack this nuts? Or maybe it won't work. 
There can be one case in a thousand that not only you are not able to open up a person, but you shouldn't even try. Now I have become tense. Yes, but you are happy. Look, phew, thanks God, we're not going to dig this anymore. No, I like to dig. Oh, you do? Well, come on, where do you have varicosis? Show me. Yes, now, now feel it. Just feel it. I'll hold your varicose veins for a little while. Will you let me? Just feel how I'm holding your varicose veins. Do you feel anything when I squeeze and withdraw my hand? Is there anything there? Some kind of tension. Tension. And what kind of thoughts are coming to your mind along with this? And what kind of situation or maybe what kind of people pop up? I'll even twist your varicose a little bit. Look, her cheekbone muscles twitched and she's really feeling it. Now, I'm not a magician. All of you can do this. This is a biological function. The instrument is taken from the hypnosis, from the Bechterev Institute. There is no magic there at all. Everything I do, you can do it also. You just need to learn a little, just a little. Yes, that thing, that's the one. What was that? As if I don't understand anything. I don't understand. Something like that. Yes, and at what age that confusion appears? What comes to your mind first? Fifteen. Yes, and what happened there? Come on, yes. What was there? Rape. Rape. And you didn't understand what was going on? Couldn't you escape? And why legs? Come on, let's do this together. I'm very sorry. Come on. What were you like there? Describe in one word. Innocent. Yes. Now, allow yourself to be innocent there for one minute. Now, you are you and you are 14 years old, 10 years old, 5 years old, 3 years old, one will find that someone had already been raped before, grandma or mother or maybe an auntie. It doesn't happen out of nowhere. This is also strategy to find a rapist. As strange as it may sound, but this is how biology works. Someone had survived as a result of that information is transmitted. One will find one's own rapist to evolve and grow. Come on, now you are you in your mom's belly and you are five months old. You are in your mom's belly and you are one month old. You are in your mom's belly and you are one day old. You were just conceived. Here I am, I'm the rape. How do you feel? I don't know what you are. Yes, I'm not the rape anymore. I am Anton Antonov and I appear there and then and I inform you, you will be raped. This will bring money and happiness in the future. I'm telling you all about it. Yes, I'll be with you in that situation. We'll be raped there together. I'm telling you about this when you are one day old in your mom's belly. And you and I found ourselves in that situation. How are you? Well, look, she's smiling. Yes. Now, you are you now and here. Of course, there are so many other details that need to be resolved. Come on, varicosis. I'm holding your varicoses and pulling. There is something there, isn't it? What? Is there another situation? Was it only this one or something else comes to mind? That I'm not ready for motherhood. Not ready for motherhood? The left leg? Left leg. A mother and a child. All mother-child conflicts. Well, in this case, I'm not ready to become a mother and I don't want to. Self-devaluation. That is, the body already wants it, but the psyche doesn't. For some reason. Because of some thought patterns. It will be hard, there won't be enough money, I won't be able to self-actualize. As a result, there is a conflict between the psyche and the body. What else? That I'm not good enough. Well, we all see that you're not good enough. And what's the conflict here? When you're not good enough, what are you like? I can move to somewhere. And what are you like when you have somewhere to move to? I'm a seeker. And when you are a seeker, what are you like? A life. And when you are alive, what are you like? I can feel myself then. Yes, and when you can feel yourself, what are you like? What's the next layer? Yes, that one, come on. One word? I don't know how to describe it in the one word. One with everything? Alive on Earth, the universe hears me. All right. Now let's do it this way. You are here and now. What does varicosis protect you from? What word or several words comes to your mind? From activeness. From activeness. 
What happens if you're active? It will hurt even more. And what happens if you're active? What's so dangerous about being active? I will make mistakes. Yes, and what happens if you make mistakes? I will be a fool. What happens if you're a fool? Well, this is obvious. It comes from childhood. Someone forbade making mistakes. They simply forbade making mistakes, and that's all. Always be perfect, always be nice, don't mess things up, and so on. What happens if you make mistakes? I don't know, I'm scared. Yes, and what is scary? What if it works out? And what happens if it works out? Come on, like this. I'll get a buzz. Yes, and do you need varicoses then if you get a buzz? No, I don't need it. So, come on, I'll touch it again. I'll take your varicoses, raise it up. How is it now? Well, there is still something. It's just a little, tell me now or you'll go back to your seat. Something relating to relationship. Yes, and what are you like when you are in a relationship? I am dependent. Will you allow yourself to be dependent for a minute? Just one. Come on, just one minute, okay? Then you can forbid yourself again. But for one minute, come on, allow yourself. Say to me, I am dependent. I am dependent. All right, and when you are dependent, what are you like? Weak. Will you allow yourself to be weak for one minute? Yes, just be patient. Be patient, okay? When you're weak, what are you like? Vulnerable. And when you're vulnerable, what are you like? Defenseless. Yes. Say, I am defenseless. I am defenseless. Yes. And how old are you now? 38. Come on. And by the way, you look like a 32-year-old. You are you and you are 30 years old. Say, I am defenseless. I am defenseless. And now you are you and you are five years old. Say, I am defenseless. I am defenseless. You are you and you are one year old. Say, I am defenseless. There is something there. I am defenseless. You are defenseless here or not? How does it feel? Yes or no? Rather yes. Come on. Now you are you and you are two weeks old. Say, I am defenseless. I am defenseless. Now you are your mother and your child is one day old. Your baby has just been born. Say, I am defenseless. I am defenseless. Okay, just be patient, okay? Just be patient. Now you are you in your mom's belly and you're one month old. Say, I am defenseless. I am defenseless. And now in your imagination, just visualize how you're swimming there in your mom's belly and defenselessness is floating nearby. What is it like? The defenselessness, what does it look like? Some kind of red mass. Yes, and now in your imagination, just visualize how you push this red mass out of there. Will you? Yes. Come on. Now see how you push it out. What? You feel sorry for it. What then? Well, push it out. Push it out. I'm there with you, holding your hand, and I'm scared to... See? Now, come on, push this thing out. Of course, it protects her from something. Yeah. I'm trying to remove it now, but it protects her from something. We don't know in what kind of conditions she lives. This is your method of adaptation to the conditions she lives in. All your diseases, they're methods of adaptation. We cannot take away from a person what protects them, but we can show him that there is another state as well. Of course, it will come back. But the body will see it is also possible to live in a different way, besides these automatic factory settings. How is it in the body now? Better. Yes, and now you're here and now. You are here and now. Yes, now let me hold your varicoses. I'm pulling your varicose veins. How is it? How does it feel? Well, it's better. Yes, and I often pay attention. Now, if a mouth opens while I'm pulling, a mouth opens, that means a person is relaxed. If the mouth is closed, that is tension. Well, you can observe everything. Breathing, body language, eyes. Your body speaks about everything and I'm reading everything. Excuse me. They often ask me, damn, do you read me in everyday life too? Yes, and I do. I'm sorry. How do you feel there, sunshine? Well, there. Your varicoses just flew out to the river. Come on, let me hug you. You're shaking. You are recovering.
Guys, she's got the boss today most of all, and I'm seriously telling you. Earlier downstairs, somebody has asked me about cancer treatment with the help of baking soda. There is one Italian guy, he discovered that soda helps. Wait here, yes, we'll now work with your symptoms. Everyone keeps staring at her intently. Look, I'll draw this diagram again. Baking soda is helpful in case of the first two tissues, because there, well in short, in the first two tissues, tumor grows in an active phase, and in case of the other two tissues, on the contrary, the ulceration occurs. And baking soda is helpful when there is a healing phase of the first two tissues. That is, it accelerates the healing phase. And that's why, for some people it works, for those who are already in the healing phase. But, baking soda destroys all the beneficial microorganisms which are needed to remove the tumor in the other two tissues. And sometimes we work with a person and I remove all the conflicts, but the tumor would not disappear. And I don't understand why. And I start asking him and he says, damn, I used to treat myself with baking soda. But how can a body remove the tumor if there are no necessary microorganisms for that? How will it manage that? Of course, there is absolutely no way. And the tumor is simply encapsulated. Why so many people live on encapsulated tumors? Because for a long time, with the help of antibiotics, chemicals and so on, including soda, they had been, what word to choose? Um, well, in short, treated themselves, healed. Why antibiotics? Why do they say that all diseases mutate? Because when you take antibiotics, you kill those substances that are needed for the healing phase and the body will produce something else. But if you used to take antibiotics on a regular basis, then you have destroyed everything and the body has nothing to work with. And of course you get stuck. Therefore, psychosomatics is great, but there is also pharma. The one with which we need to unite and work together. Or smash it. Anya gestured at me back there with the finger gun. Yes, of course, my specialization is clinical psychology. We collaborate with medicine, indeed. In case of oncology, you need to collaborate with medicine, because, well, a patient is more relaxed and comfortable, but you still need to explain to a person who says, I don't need psychosomatics, ask him or tell him to talk to doctors first. How will he smell after that? How will he feel? How will the body live without a part or the organ that will be removed? How will he function? What drugs will he have to take for the rest of his life? The simplest example, a friend of mine had both carotid arteries clogged very heavily. He was told to have an operation on both of them. There are more than 70%. Then one specialist in the field of psychosomatics said, I can help you remove it gradually. But then the doctors told him, all right, this thing will come off, your heart can fail. Well, they scared him. So, remove the fear in the first place. Send him to a psychologist, not even a psychosomatic therapist. Take this fear away so that the body decides, can it do it or not? The answers are all there. Do you know that there are benefits of being intimidated? Why does ideology intimidate us? Why are the news broadcasted in a proportion of 1 to 5? Why do they broadcast 5 bad news to 1 good one? Because you don't hear yourself. And when you don't hear yourself, you become part of the congregation. When I'm an individual, well, what do individuals start doing? They begin to follow their own personal path, develop in their own way. But it's easier to run a common company. And it needs to be intimidated in order to accomplish that. For this, it perceives the ideas. This is neither good or bad. We need leaders, guys. We can't do otherwise, and I'm sorry. We cannot live without a leader until I become a leader myself. That's just the way it is. We are intimidated by the capitalism so that we often go to the drugstore. Nobody thinks about evolution there. If we look from the perspective of the planet because it keeps this all, then it is necessary. It is clear. But for me, this is too much. For me, it's too much when a person knows this information and does not transmit it to people. He knows it all, but remains silent. He sits up there somewhere and revokes licenses from people who spread it. Why? Why is he doing this? Is it evolution that drives him to do this, or greed? 
Well, naturally, guys, if we launch this system, the selection will still work, and people will suffer during a healing phase as they do now, but at least they'll know what it is and why it is happening. When you are afraid that you don't know, the fear kills you even faster. How are you? Now, what are you like and how are you? I have a problem here. What kind of problem? I have a very rare disease that is considered incurable. I also have psoriasis and that's incurable. In fact, throughout all my life they used to tell me that everything will only get worse over time and it will be transferred to joints and psoriatic arthritis will begin. Don't take anything, no pills, nothing. Guys, I can show you the photos what I was like and I was told that there's no way out, you'll die. So what kind of disease do you have? I have these white spots, they're specific. Okay. No, that's not it. That's not it. Yes, you are unique. She's unique, don't you all agree? I think so too. And unfortunately, the doctors told me that uh, this is incurable. Well, give this knowledge back to them. Right now, see that, give it back to them. Is it a vitiligo or what? No, not vitiligo. Yes, and uh, the interesting thing is that it is treated in the same way as it appears. No one knows where from, why and how, but it scared me and I launched the thinking process that I would have more of them, and there are more of them. Well, of course. Moreover, they'll appear in those places which she fears the most. They will be multiplied even more, because the body will begin to protect them. Show me those spots again. Here. No, they're actually visible. Their texture is different. Wait, there is some more here and here. Yes, enough. Yes, enough. Okay, I got it. Show me one more time. They also appear on my hands. I don't have them here yet, but they started to pop up. Okay, well, come on. I can tell the biological meaning, or we can just work through the psyche. Well, I don't know, but I'm sure that this is a psychological thing. So, do you think that this is psychosomatics too, don't you? Well, I think so, because there were certain situations. And in your understanding, is there anything that is not related to psychosomatics at all? I think yes. And what are they? Well, a person can simply catch a cold because of bad weather or something else. And that's all? Yes. Okay, come on, stand here, please. A bit closer, I want to stand in front of the fan. Okay, come on now, in your imagination, see your spots on the legs. Can you see them? Yes. And how old are you now? 32. Now you are you and you're 30 years old. Relax, do not analyze the age. Just see, do you have these spots in your imaginary picture? Yes. 29 years old, do you see them? Not so clearly. Okay, and 28 years old? Less. 27 years old. Oh, now that's it, it has started. What has started? Well, there is a messed up situation when I was 27. And what happened there? Come on. I don't know. Don't lie to me. I thought the reason was an earlier past. Okay, let's keep on searching. Come on, 26 years old. Do you see any pictures? No. 27 years old. Do you see any pictures? Yes. Come on, a specific situation or a person in which or with whom this happened. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? I had so many betrayals. This is something related to that. Okay, so has the traitor touched you there? Tell me, please. No, didn't touch. Okay, didn't touch. What did the traitor do then? Did she beat you up? He cheated on me. You are here and now and see. Visualize your spots. I am here and I am disloyalty. I am coming to you. I am disloyalty. Look at the spots. Does the picture change or not? Yes. What? Do they increase or decrease in size? Yes, they become ugly. Okay. Now, I don't know how to help you. I was sure that I had already forgiven everything and accepted. I was sure that I had already forgiven everything and accepted. I did. I was sure that I realized this trouble. Do I need to explain the gesture language, guys? I worked so much on this with psychologists. Okay, come on. Look, I'll do it this way. Two hands. On one hand, everything remains as it is, and on the other, you'll meet a man. There will be love, children, money, an apartment, a nice car, everything you want, but he will cheat on you every day and there won't be any spots. And your hand goes like BAM and relaxed. That's it. The fear has gone right away. Well, what will you choose? This one. I don't believe you. What is disloyalty after all? 
It's not that scary. So, so what am I talking about? This is a natural need. Everyone is polygamous, of course. The thing is that, here's what I'll tell you. According to my inner feeling, I was involved in this subject very deeply. When I developed myself to a certain state, it was as if sex has completely disappeared from the paradigm. It has totally disappeared. That is, it seems like it doesn't exist. And I understood that it was also, uh, I don't know how to call it, Everything I did was consistent with my inner state. That is, I was satisfying some kind of a need or ran away from some kind of fear. As soon as I resolved the subject of my mother completely, because... Well, probably not completely, since my voice has just raised. But as soon as I resolved mum's subject a little more, it disappeared from my life. I stopped running back and forth. And now I'm still a bit scared sometimes. Maybe I'll become a sage and celibacy. What to do with you? Should I come to a session? No, I don't need such people in a session. I have many more. What? Cheating? Oh, no. This is easier. I have more diseases. There are always lots of throat issues, tonsils. Well, tonsils are the morsel conflict. There is nothing complicated there at all. All sorts of tonsillitis and so on. Okay, here I have your spots. Here are your spots, the whole body is covered with them, and I'll give them to you. You'll stand still, I'll give them to you now. How does it feel? Awful. And where is it in the body? Hands are shaking, legs. How old are you again? 30? 20? Right, 32, okay. Now you're 30 years old, now 28 years old. How is it in the legs and the hands? Fine. Okay, now 29 years old, what now? Yes, yes. What happened there? I don't remember. What happened there? I don't know. Well, come on, it's safe here. I don't remember. There were so many things. It's totally safe here. The thing that you've seen in the picture. Well, something related to Thailand. Yes, and what happened in Thailand? Come on. I can't say it. Well, you don't have to say it. And how many people were there? Well, I mean... Oh, come on, you're all perverts, damn it. Now, how many people were involved in that situation? Two. Two? Well, a person and I. Terrible. Well, let him do it there. Tell him. It wasn't him, it was me. All right. Let him react the way he reacted there. Let him do what he did there. Yes, come on. Let him react the way he reacted. Yes, now look at you. The eyes are watering, you feel better. Here, I have your spots again. Now I'll give them back to you. Your spots are here. Now hold them. How do you feel? Fine, I don't react the same way. Well, well, there is a little something left. What other situation was there? If you don't want to continue, we won't. You've realized already that you can resolve it yourself later. Is there any other situation? Yes, guys, I can work without verbalization. This is a little more exhausting for me. It's just sometimes businessmen come to sessions, celebrities come. There are quite a lot of them in Bali. They come to me incognito and say, I can't say. I reply, you don't have to say. And it happened, like that. I almost let it slip who it was. Here, your spots, accept them for a minute. They'll always be with you, for one minute. Just take them, hold them for one minute. What are you like when you have these spots? Let's go quickly. Insecure. Yes, when you are insecure, what are you like? Just that thing, just say it. I'm obsessed. And when you are obsessed, what are you like? You're holding yourself back. Yes, come on. Yes, I can see that you're holding yourself back. When a person squints, he doesn't let himself in the feelings. Observe the politicians. When they lie, they squint. Because it's necessary to lie. Well, not lie, I'm sorry, but distort the information. But the feelings do break through and they hold it back. Yeah, what? I, when I am obsessed, I am bored. I have no interest in life. Okay, so here I am, I am you, and I'm interested in life. I am you. How does it feel when I'm coming to you? Great. Great. And now I'm interested in life and I'm leaving. You'll never have me. Never. Bye. Not so good. Yes, and why are you smiling? Because this is a defensive reaction. 
I have already talked about this today. I don't know what to do with you, damn it. I can't help you. I just can't help you. No way. I have disloyalty here. Now you are you and you are 15 years old. You are you and you are 5 years old, 7 years old, 1 year old. And I, Anton Antonov, appear there in front of you and I inform you, if there is disloyalty, it means that he loves you very much. And if you are disloyal, you will be very rich. And also, you'll be very happy. You don't believe me there, do you? It seems like they cheated on her mother, or she is disloyal herself. Yes, both. I saw it. Well, it's obvious. I saw it. I saw it. Well, I don't know what to do with you. I'm just mocking her. Well, not mocking, I'm just shaking her a little. She just doesn't want to go there herself. She doesn't want to dig into it. I just saw it. I can see that picture even now. Yes, now see that picture. Accept everything that's happening there in that picture. Agree with this. Yes, this is happening. This is happening. Yes, this is happening. And now ask them to give you what belongs to you. What is yours? Ask them. Yes. And now give them what belongs to them. And see what you give. You don't have to say it aloud. I am disloyalty and I'm coming to you. How do you feel? Fine. That's it. It's gone. See, her cheeks have turned pink a little. Now again, your spots are there. Here, here are your spots. Take them. I don't feel anything. Well, you're lying again. There is still something left. No, I'm not. I'm just sweating because it's hot in here. No, sweating means discharge. And it's not hot in here. See your spots now in your imagination. You still have them. I do. It means that we have not removed this yet. In what memory did the sensation of these spots appear? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? I'm riding a bike. Yes, and what's going on there? I just saw it then. Well, a spot on my leg, yes. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? It was in Thailand. So what happened in Thailand? Well, okay, now, we she can't say it. Well, I can't push her to feelings, but I don't want to. There was nothing that important. Well, what was there then? Well, I just lived and worked there. Yes, and then? Had fun. In short, do you know why you have these spots? If I knew it, I wouldn't be standing here. Do you believe her? Neither do I. But it's not in my interest to lie. It is. Why? Because you are defending yourself from something. Because if you realize it, you'll know and say it, and you'll have to get rid of it. That is, this reaction will no longer exist. You will have to learn something different. The body does not like it. And what if my subconscious mind blocks the memory so that I don't live with it? Is it possible? So that you don't live with it. But you already live with it. If it blocks it, does it mean that this is constantly inside of you? I don't know. Yes, well, I know it's quite difficult. Some bald man comes here and starts talking with jokes and rhymes. In short, visualize your spots in your imagination. Come on, now you are you and you're 33 years old. Do you see the spots? No. 34 years old? No. 35? No. 28? Yes. 27? No. 28? Yes. 27 years and one month old. Do you see them? Yes. Yes, and what happened there after all? I don't remember. It was so long ago. Well, there you go. You just saw this picture again. Now, come on. I see the spots only. Just look around. What do you see around you? Take a look at the spots and look around. In your imagination. What's there? That thing there. Yes. Yeah. What's that? My ex? What a jerk. What did he do there? Well, like everyone else. What? Cheated on me. Like everyone else. Everyone cheated on her. Well, not like everyone else. He just cheated on me in different way. I found out and it wasn't pleasant for me. How is that? Did he cheat with a man or what? No. And how then? Why? He was just lying. I don't like it when people lie. If you are disloyal, say it. This can be discussed. Was he holding your leg at that moment or what? Why are the spots on your legs? Well, this is clearly an unpleasant contact. Outwardly, it even looks like a herpes a little. It's just that it usually doesn't pop up there. This is an unpleasant contact indeed. 
Why legs? Yes, yes, he often held my legs. He used to hold my legs and caressed them always. Or, no, not him. This is a nightmare. Although we are friends now, just friends. Shall we go together and kill your ex? No, he's a good person. No, of course, I'm kidding. We won't kill anyone. Okay, now here I am, I'm your ex. I am him. I'm here. Forgive me, please, that I've acted the way I have. Forgive me, please, that I've cheated on ye. I'm sorry. I was not a control myself. I myself do not realize what is happening with me. I'm sorry. I loved you the way I could, the way I was taught to love. We met and got our experience, the one that we both needed. I'm sorry that it happened that way. Now see your spots. I don't see them. Shall we applaud? Thank you, but I'll still come to private session. Yes, of course. Welcome. I don't know when, but yes, I'm so busy these days. I need a personal assistant, by the way. I've started looking for one. I'm not offering any vacancy yet, just making an announcement. I'm a little tired already. So, metastases. What are the metastases, guys? All processes in the body take place at three levels. Brain, psyche, and body. With the psyche, everything is clear. Something happens, some situation. A psyche in input filter, an input channel. It enters through the psyche and remains there. In the body, it is a symptom. For example, these spots. In the brain, in the same time, and I'm drawing it up here, in a certain way, and there are lots of them here, we call them relays. In psychosomatics, there are many, many, many different relays. They're all like circles. Each relay is responsible for its own organ. And if it's a skin, for example, then it will shoot somewhere here. If I'm not mistaken, it's the left side. I don't remember the number for this relay. There is where a hotbed of tension will arise. We can see this hotbed of tension on the computer tomography. It looks like a darkened area, sometimes something like circles, but they're uneven. Doctors do not pay attention to them, considering them errors in the picture. Of course, if some areas are seriously dark, then you will be sent for an MRI scanning, and most likely you will be diagnosed with brain tumor, which, in principle, does not exist. Here, in this hotbed of tension, this hotbed of tension persists throughout the conflict's active phase while you're stressed out, and as soon as you enter the healing phase, fluid is drawn here. Of course, now I'm drawing some serious situation, serious illness, for example, a tumor. The hotbed will be very large. We all have a whole bunch of them in our brain. The brain is evolving together with us, just like everything else, just like the psyche and just like body. And the hotbed will be very large. And when the situation is discharged, when the body enters the healing phase, the fluid is drawn here as well. This hotbed is also removed by edema, like everything else is healed in our body. And if you take MRI at this very moment, you receive a contrast solution and accumulates there. And they see that it has accumulated there and you are diagnosed with brain cancer. Although it has nothing to do with brain cancer, a brain tumor does not exist. Of course, if you find yourself in a bunch of situations in which you feel uncomfortable, to put it mildly, you will constantly jump from the active phase to the healing phase. The edema will decrease here sometimes, and then the hotbed of tension will reappear. Well, to put it mildly, it's not good. But I would not recommend the chemotherapy. Or work with the therapist very seriously in the first place, and then... If it doesn't go away, only in this case use the medical treatment. Now, of course, I'm not against medicine in any way. Just go on and do it if you feel like it. This is totally normal. I wanted to say, I have a very close friend who was diagnosed with a brain tumor and she ignored everything that doctors said and didn't undergo the treatment. And after six months, she recovered herself. The body felt that it had already entered the healing phase. So calm down, calm down. What is a benign tumor? I'd like to know what the diagnosis was, benign tumor. 
But what's the difference? The active phase, this is malignant. When the tumor grows in first of the first tissues, that's it, I'm already getting a little tired. Anyway, an active phase, you will be diagnosed with a malignant one. In a healing phase, with a benign one, because it does not grow. This is the only difference. Accordingly, if you are here, then you are in an active phase, and edema increases and you're diagnosed with a malignant cancer. If the edema remains unchanged due to the fact that you entered the healing phase, you are diagnosed with a benign one. Only glia proliferates in the brain. The brain cells don't do that. Everyone's know that. Does glioblastoma exist? It does, but the processes are all the same. Glia is being scarred, and this is also diagnosed as tumor. A brain tumor does not exist. All the diagnoses that you know as brain tumor are, well, to put it mildly, well, they send them to a conveyor, okay? How much does therapy cost? How much money is allocated for this purpose? People don't even try to realize it when they earn money. And why do I need to realize it when money flows to me anyway? Therefore, in no case you can blame people, especially doctors. But someone realizes this. Someone who revokes license from doctors in Europe, he realizes this all. Or they realize it. A group of people. They send them to undergo the harsh treatment. And from what people die then? From treatment, guys. Most people die from treatment. The majority dies because the body is exhausted, exhausted by everything, exhausted by the feeling of fear of death, radiation. People go bald, the immune system simply disappears. Yes, we are diagnosed, we are told that cancer, this is the disease of the weak immune system. So why are we destroying it even further then? Tell me, please. Why are you making it even weaker? Why are you reducing the body's resistance or if by increasing it, perhaps the person would begin to recover? But we cannot strengthen it only physically. We also need to improve the mental state. And in our country, no one really does that. Nobody likes to do it. Because of this, psychology is not included in our ideology either. Well, psychologists exist, they do work, but in our country nobody talks about it too much. They'll advertise this new type of chemotherapy on the TV program or news, but for some reason they don't inform us about the new method of psychotherapy. Yes, Timur. You just talked about baking soda. Now, I'm not talking about a cancerous tumor, I mean all in one. Actually, what to do in such case, so that you understand that you had worked with him successfully, found a root cause? that you had found it, removed it, resolved it, and so on. We're watching him, whether the tumor disappears or not. Well, it's just very serious. Well, the tumor can be encapsulated, and it is either encapsulated or they remove it through medical surgery. Now, what's the question? It's just very difficult to determine what kind of substances the body lacks. Does current medicine examine deeply? Well, biochemistry can explore something. What about metastasis? Are you asking about something specific, about a specific case? You helped a person as a specialist. Well, there are a bunch of people living with encapsulated tumors. Those who realize that medicine cannot give them the answers they need. They go and live normally and everything is all right. Encapsulated tumor, yeah. On the ovary, for instance, one of my female clients has it. Well, if that's okay, so what? What if it's strongly manifested? I'm just not a physiologist. Sorry, but I'm not a physiologist either, you know? You ask me as if I were a physiologist. I'm not a physiologist, I'm a psychologist. What do you want to hear at the end of your question? What such people should do? I'm asking you, is he happy? Does he feel good and easy? He says yes, happy. If this tumor is disturbing him, let him go and cut it out. He'll cut it out from the happy state and everything will go well. In the first place, we remove it. And if we're talking about clients with an oncology diagnosis, I remove the fear of chemotherapy in the first place. Moreover, I already have some experience when people come to me after the procedure and say, I feel terrible after the chemo. I return them to a cheerful state in half an hour. And then they're like, I thought that was because of the chemotherapy. But this happens not because of the procedure itself, but rather from the fear of chemotherapy. Because he has some knowledge that he should feel. That's why I repeat over and over again, our body is unique. What they tell us that we are weak is incorrect, to put it mildly, guys. The body is so strong, it has carried us through such a jungle for 400 million years, and now they tell us you went outside and got sick and you died. My God, who on earth invented that? And I tell them, 
Here, take the chemotherapy. He says that everything is totally fine because the body can withstand any stress. Moreover, if it goes into that by itself, it means that it can handle it. This is 100% truth. For example, I have a tumor, any kind of. I'm going to a doctor. And what does the doctor tell me? Not out of malice, but out of lack of knowledge. He also Googles the diagnosis, trust me. Well, not all the doctors, but some of them do. As the joke goes, oh, doctor, may I Google it? Patient, I'll Google it myself. No need for self-medication. So anyway, uh, what does the doctor tell me? That this tumor leads to death in 80% of cases. Where will they find metastases? In the lungs. Because I got scared of death. All the metastases are additional conflicts of diagnosis. If I'm afraid of death, the metastases will be found in lungs. If I'm afraid that I won't be able to do anything, that I'm weak, and that's it, I cannot handle anything, I cannot work and earn money, where will they be manifested in? In the bones. Self-devaluation. They'll find Ewing sarcoma in the bones. They'll say that this is metastases. If I'm scared that I won't be able to work and earn money, there will be nothing to eat and they'll find metastases in my liver because the liver reacts to the hunger conflicts. Liver, parenchyma, the main tissue. If I'm afraid that I won't have anything to eat, the metastases will be discovered in my liver, and so on. You have probably seen hungry African children with such huge bellies. Why does it happen if they eat nothing? There is a conflict of hunger. The liver begins to increase in size so that if you ate something, it sucked out everything useful from the food. This is a biological meaning of liver conflicts. If I'm afraid that I won't have anything to eat, the metastases will be discovered in my liver. All the metastases are the results of diagnosis conflicts. Doctors tell us that all tumors are the cells of the same organ. A cell of an organ cannot detach, fly through the lymph and become a cell of another organ. Although I think they are trying to justify this as well. But in general, if you ask a question to a doctor and he asks you, as it happens in my case, do you have any medical education? I said, no. Well, that's all then. It means that there's nothing more to talk about and you won't understand anything about it anyway. But damn, how's that? If a person cannot clearly explain what he does, does he himself understand what he does in general? Yeah, I always love this expression that if a person cannot clearly talk about his business, most likely this is not his business. Most likely he's a salaried worker. Same here. If the lecturer cannot tell you clearly what he does, well, does he himself understand his subject at all? All the metastases are the results of diagnosis conflicts. Or it's a secondary conflict. It can be caught in the hospital. It can be instilled from somewhere else during the course of life. Since I'm already mentally weak, because I have diagnosis, of course, I'm even more susceptible to illnesses. If we're talking about the evolution, the mighty of this world know that the worse the psychological state, the more person is susceptible to diseases, the psyche gets weaker, and the message is spread on purpose. Pharma is one of the most serious forces of the world after natural resources, oil and gas. The most serious one, guys. There is unbelievable volume of money there. It's simply unrealistic. And everything you know about launching all of these viruses, all sorts of Siberian ulcers and so on. This is all exaggerated on purpose. Are there at least 100 people really sick with coronavirus? Maybe the fear makes others pass away? I love this parable very much. It's about a man who walked through a desert and met death. He asked her, where are you going? And death answered, to Baghdad. And man said, I won't let you go to Baghdad, you'll kill everyone there. And death says, I only take 40 souls, I promise. He said, okay, then go. Death went on and the man returned to the city and found out that 5,000 people had died. He went to a desert, found death and said, you promised to take 40 souls only. But death answered, I took 40. The fear took the rest. We infect each other with feelings of fear very strongly very strongly, and the body reacts to the feeling of fear with protection from what is it afraid of. If a mother tells a child, don't eat a lot of strawberries, you'll have an allergy, what will the body do if a person is an authority, it means the world to him? It will defend itself. The child eats strawberries because there is a desire to eat, he needs vitamins. What will be the reaction? Of course, an allergic one. Well, mother will call it that way because the body began to defend itself. Either it will itch or something that will hurt and so on. 
We are very susceptible to emotional contamination. Very much, you can't even imagine how much. In the beginning, I showed you already how easily I switched emotions in you. Imagine that it happens to you while you're consciously sitting here. And what happens when you unconsciously walk around and different pictures flash here and there, you turn on the TV, internet and Instagram, but so much unrealized information is being instilled in our unconscious mind, you can't even imagine. I showed how it worked with Tom and Jerry. Have you seen what they inculcate in us with the help of Tom and Jerry? What kind of debauchery and substitution of values was already embedded in us 30 years ago? Now the technology has developed so much that even I can't keep up with observing where it's going. These are very serious systems. And there is someone at the head of the system, someone who runs it and someone who understands how it works. And this is scary. That someone understands this and we are like rabbits here. Watch the experiment Universe 25. If someone follows the coaches who promise a happy life, there will never be a happy life. In a happy life will perish. The Universe 25 is an excellent story about this, an experiment where mice were given a perfect life 25 cycles. The experiment went on for 40 or 60 years, several generations of scientists were conducting it. The colony always dies. This is my opinion, but it's very similar to what is happening now, when males stop caring for females. Well, isn't this happening now? When men start caring for themselves. Mice do the same thing there in all cycles. They all have food, water and safety. They take care of themselves and forget about the females. What happens to this colony? It perishes because they stop reproducing. Isn't that what's happening now? Of course we'll somehow get over it, but the essence and the idea are very similar. That's what I asked about. Sure, well, things won't simply happen, we'll figure something out. The mighty of this world, the capitalists, will come up with something to keep on earning. They'll come up with another crap to make money on that, guys. You think very categorically. Either like this or like that, this will never happen. In nature, there is nothing permanent or nothing fixed. Everything always changes, constantly. Thanks God, by the way. You started the lecture by saying that, to some extent, you do this and become a cynic. This is normal, because it is the quality that allows you to help other people to get rid of, and there goes a list, to become free, someone becomes happier, and so on and so forth. At the same time, those comrades who accumulate the process of evolution you have a conflict with them. No, two more. They accumulate... The point is not to point out a mistake. This is like... And where is the mistake? And where is the mistake? I don't see any mistake at all. Yes, look, look. Pointed out to a mistake and pointed with his fingers. I need cynicism in my work. If I sit and cry with a person, well, that won't work very efficiently. Those whom you call capitalists, you cannot look at them cynically. If, in fact, within the framework of your own paradigm, they contribute to the acceleration of the evolutionary process. Who said that they accelerate? Everything is evolution. We can take any model of the world order and it will still be evolution. Nature always equalizes, guys. There is also the smart planet or the universe or the nature we will always equalize everything. And even if we launch the system and someone starts to live better, someone will still feel worse. If it appears at some point simultaneously, it will disappear from another. Remember this postulate. What do you want to know now? Tell me. I can see there is a little boy who wants to prove something to someone. What do you want? Do you see everything? Yes. Okay, so what's the question? This is what I want to tell you about. About what? You started with the statement that the motivation from stress, problem or... I don't understand something or what. I do not understand. Probably. Probably I'm tired. Maybe. I wanted to discuss this topic later. I don't want to. Why should I discuss this, guys? Every day people come to me saying, come on, let's go, let's discuss this. Why do I need this? I'm impetuous. You need this, not me. But you mentioned that you wanted to understand the mission, motivation. What is your question? 
There is no question. There is no question to you. I want to give you an answer. Ah, so I asked you a question of some kind or what? You said you were looking for a mission. Timor, in short, I'm sorry, but... Later, later, if you want to. Okay. I just no longer get it, what's going on, okay? They'll explain something to me. I want to explain it to you. Come. Come here. Come to me. We have a new lecturer. Applaud him. Stand here. Come on. Now tell me what you wanted to. I just didn't really get it. Sorry. What you do vibes with me a lot. Somewhere at the beginning you mentioned a very important thought, important for me. You see, different things resonate with different people. Of course, of course, yes. You said that you wanted to understand your mission. No, I didn't. I already understand it. I live the mission which comes from inside of me today. I want to see it on a large scale. I don't think you can tell me that. No one from here can tell me anything about it, and nobody knows his own mission in the context of several lives. I explained earlier. The mission can only be seen in the context of multiple lives. I said that already. Where is the mistake? Now the dialogue turns out to be meaningless. If you stay within this framework of this paradigm, the dialogue becomes meaningless. Okay, now give me five. That's it. You may go back to your seat. Applaud him once again. I just didn't understand what the point was and what I had to do with everything happening now. I just didn't get it. Sorry, Timur. Maybe the topic is suitable for another lecture? Yes, yes, everything is all right. This is not a lecture topic. We can just talk about it later. That's it. Everything is okay. If you want to talk, then yes, probably not here, because we are talking about psychosomatics here, and not about my missions, all right? All right. What did you want to say by that? I don't get it, yeah. It's just there is some kind of impulse, but I don't understand what is it and what it is for. The desire to understand what happened, this is about it now. You are saying there was no question, but the question was and is. You are saying that you are free, but continue to remain in it with your consciousness. Okay, I just respect you and that's why I just can't tell you that's it, go away, you know? No, I honestly don't understand either. You don't get it either. Now, when you're asking all of this, what are you like, describe it in one word. What are you like, in one word? There, you saw it. Yes, yes, seeking myself. In short, I get it. Okay, okay. What else I haven't told you today? I wanted to say more about metastases and something else also. About money, guys. About money, yeah. Guys, now I showed you earlier in case of relationships. What was I? I was a womanizer, yes, and the girl had certain emotions. You earn money the same way. You also can't get through. And Xu is leaving as soon as we start discussing money. We can't get certain amounts of money in the same way. We can't go to a certain job. Now I'm telling you to see in your imagination the amount of money you would like to earn in your wildest dreams. See it, your monthly income, the amount you'd like to earn. From here we can go into several ways, but I'd like to show you how it works so that you can pay attention to it in the future where these sensations arise. I just know that there are several people among the audience who don't know how to do it yet or maybe simply don't want to do it or haven't opened the world of feeling in their lives. They focus on their thoughts, though thoughts are just a continuation of feelings, and this is normal too. As I said earlier, a cat doesn't need to know why it is warm here, she simply comes and lays down. That's enough for her. In the same way I pay attention to my thoughts, this is also acceptable. I don't need to know what kind of feeling comes along with it if I learn to catch my thoughts. And now see the most desirable sum of money, the amount you'd like to earn. The most desirable amount of money that you would like to earn. And now I have this amount here. I have it here. The most desirable amount, the amount that you'd like to earn monthly. And now I'll distribute it to you all. What's the matter? About money. Yeah, guys, I showed you earlier in case of relationships. Great. Great. Well, everything is clear. Here, I have a million dollars. A million dollars. That's mine. Yes, that's obvious. Here, ten million dollars. I get it. 
Many of you will say now, I'm great and you're not even breathing, I understand. It's 10 million dollars here, how does it feel? Just feel it. You don't have to tell me anything because you may actually end up saying something for others to hear. I like it, I want it. I'm actually afraid of it all my life. Yes, and it is very obvious. This is exactly what I'm trying to show. 10 million dollars. 10 million dollars. I felt bad even before you brought it closer to me. 10 million dollars. How does it feel, Katya? It feels hot. Feels hot. 10 million dollars. 10. Here it is, a hundred million dollars. My heart pounded. A heart pounded. Of course, what does the body do? It is scared. It is scared. Yes, you are simply told that earn a lot, you can do it, while your body is not tuned to do it. It doesn't know how to do it. It doesn't belong to it. This is the first thing. The second thing is that it may belong to it, but I'll tell you now why it can. $100 million. How does it feel? I don't understand this amount at all. $1 million. How does it feel? Say it in words. Verbalize. I don't understand it either. Well, it's scary even to say, right? Well, we have already worked with you. You too, Regina. Have some rest. You clearly feel something too. A hundred million dollars. Ten million dollars. Ten million dollars. All faces are familiar. Unclear. Unclear. You are new here. Ten million dollars. How does it feel? Great. Great. How does it feel? Good. Are you sure? A hundred million dollars. Here, take it. Yeah. And how do you feel that they're good? Where do you feel it in the body? Now look, when I withdraw it. Now look, and you can call it good feelings? Yes, here, I have HIV. HIV, here, take it. How does it feel? I feel nothing. Nothing. Well, I get it. We'll change it. Here, a hundred million dollars. Come on, cool. One hundred millions is fine. How does it feel when I bring this hand closer? But you aren't breathing either, sorry. And your jaw went to a side, see? Guys, we're all deceiving ourselves consciously, and that's okay. Even I deceive myself all the time. You felt that you have fear of this amount of money. Your body is biologically or evolutionally programmed that if you want it, your body won't let you there. If this information was embedded once, in childhood for instance, for example, something was taken away from dad, some business, and he was stressed and panicked, we're all going to die, we'll have nothing to eat, and maybe some relatives were dispossessed three generations ago, you won't be able to earn it in any way, no matter how many courses you attend and so on. Your body won't simply let you until you realize what exactly you are afraid of. What is this reason of this fear? Did I explain it cleanly or not? Well, come on, now you are you, all of you. You are you, you are 40 years old. You are you and you are 30 years old. And now you are you and you are 20 years old, 15 years old, 10 years old, 5 years old, 3 years old, 1 year old. You are you and you are 1 month old. And now you are you in your mom's belly and you are 7 months old. You are you in your mom's belly and you're five months old, three months old, one month old, one day old, and you're just conceived and no one knows about you yet. And now you are you, but you're not incarnated yet. You're flying somewhere in the universe in some kind of an energy. Yes, everyone took a deep breath. You are choosing your family. I, Anton Antonov, appear there and then, and I inform you, $100 million brings happiness and more money, and this is safe any amount. And I'll tell you that I've seen you in your 50s and you are very happy and you are very rich. Everything is great with you. And with this knowledge, all of you come back to here and now. You're here and now. And again, I have $100 million here. I'll give it to you now. Just feel whether it changed or not. Of course, not everyone will succeed. Yes, whose feelings have changed? Mine. Has it changed? Has it changed? How does it feel? It hasn't changed. There is something instilled very deeply. It needs to be dug into. It has changed. So it has changed. Timur has absolutely retreated, by the way. He's arguing with me inside of him. I'm arguing with myself. It has nothing to do with you. Well, with yourself. Yes, you want everything for yourself. Selfish. You do everything for yourself. And how does it feel? Now you're nodding and smiling. Just a little bit, yeah. How does it feel? A hundred million dollars. How does it feel in your spine now, Regina? I remembered my mother. Remembered your mother? Agree with her there. Agree with her. Do it. 
and now ask her to give you something that belongs to you and observe what she gives. Look, look. What does she give you? First, she is taking her anger and gives me a dream of being a woman. Yes, and how does it feel now? Yes, good girl. Come on, a hundred million dollars. Dima is here after yesterday's session. He feels great in general. Here, here, have one hundred million dollars. How does it feel? A hundred million dollars. How does it feel in your chest? Well, you're still a little afraid, aren't you? Well, a little. Okay. Here's a hundred million dollars. I have a little dizziness. Dizziness is asphyxation. On the contrary, it's good. This means that we resolved it. Of course. Well, if it doesn't go away, tell me then. Did you understand how it works? Of course, it didn't work for everyone. Someone didn't really listen to me. Someone didn't want to listen at all, and so on. Someone's body is already protecting itself from me because I might remind you of someone. Someone from your past. Voice, ears, eyes, I don't know, gestures, behavior. And the body activates some kind of protection and it doesn't let you go a little deeper because this bald guy doesn't seem safe. That's what body thinks. But I'm still very glad that you all came here, that you listened to all of this today, that you felt it all yourself. I'm sure that this will be a new step for you and you'll never forget this information. This information will start to appear more and more often in all sources that are familiar to us. It has already emerged, it's just that it used to be for the old generation. I don't know why, but when I discovered this, it resonated with me a lot. Now I transmit it with joy and pleasure, for you and for myself, of course. Well, I'm glad that everyone has come here today and thank you very, very much. Thank you.